and indeed they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? The same way we have all gathered here today in God's presence, in the valley of the Lord. And when we look at our lives, if we check our situations, we will see symbols of dry bones. Maybe there are challenges that we have come into the presence of the Lord with, and it looks like it's not solvable, just like the bones were dry. God was asking Ezekiel, he said to him, son of man, can these bones live? So I'm asking you, as you are gathered there, can your troubles be solved by God? Do you believe the hand of the Lord can cause a turnaround in that situation? Do you believe, as impossible as they may be, do you believe that God can make them possible? God had to ask Ezekiel again. And at the end of the day, we know what the resulting effect was when he prophesied to the bone. So I want to encourage us in faith that our faith should be lifted up on high. And we should entrust God with our lives and our situation. Believing that our dry bones shall live again. That before we leave his presence here today, that situations that seem impossible will be supernaturally turned around in Jesus' mighty name. So as we worship, as we go on in the service, be positive that the Lord will stretch forth his hand and meet us at every point of our need in Jesus' mighty name. It's a gift to be alive. Hallelujah. It's a Praise blessing to be alive. Hallelujah. Father, we have come to lift up our hands to worship you. Because you alone are deserving of all our praises. Hallelujah. And so we ask this morning. Just bring your name upon me. Breathe. Just bring your name upon me breathe yo hey bo hey it's your name breathe Lord just breathe your name upon me breathe just breathe your name That your bread come upon us, Jesus. Just breathe your name. Just breathe your name upon me. Yeah, oh hey, oh hey. Oh hey, it's your name. Oh, just breathe your name. Just breathe your name. Father to challenge, sweet and sweet, lighted by your word, so breath of life, and with your breath of life, that's how I come alive, that's only I'm your breath, that's how I change my world, that's how I change my world. to child 
to child. Spirit to my spirit. Spirit to spirit. Lighted by your word. With your bread of life, Jesus. With your bread of life. That is only when I come alive. That's how I go. That is only when the world can that's how I change my world. Just breathe your name. Just breathe your name. Just breathe your name upon me. Breathe. Hey, just breathe your name. Just breathe your name. Hello, Father. 
are you torn? What are you torn into wine? Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. Not like you. Not like you. Into the darkness we shine. Into the darkness we shine. Yeah, out of the ashes we rise. There's no one like you. Not like you. Our hands in the sanctuary. We lift our hands to give you the glory. We lift our hands, lift our hands to give you the praise, and we will praise you for the rest of our days. Yes, we will praise you for the rest of our days. Yeah, we sing a song. We sing a song in the sanctuary. We sing a song to give you the glory. We sing a song.
Hallelujah. Can we please lift our hands in worship? Let's just exalt the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Let's lift our hearts and our hands in worship. Let's just worship Him and exalt Him. Let's exalt Him. Worship Him in the beauty of His holiness. Our God is worthy to be praised, He's worthy to be exalted. We worship you, Jesus. We exalt and we magnify you. We ascribe all praise. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We exalt your name and your name. worthy to be exalted. He's worthy to be magnified. He's here with us this morning. I want you to lay down everything that weighs you. I want you to cast aside every burden and just open your heart, open your spirit, man, and just worship him. Lord, we worship you. We exalt and we magnify you. We worship you, Lord Jesus. We welcome you into our midst this morning. We welcome you, King of glory. We welcome you, my Father, my God. We exalt you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we exalt you this morning. We give you praise. We give you glory. Jesus, we thank you for every life represented here, online and on site. For everyone that has gathered to praise and to worship you. We say thank you for every life, oh Lord. Lord, we recognize and we acknowledge your authority. We acknowledge that you are the creator of the heavens and the earth. We acknowledge, we recognize and acknowledge that you are the supplier of all blessings. The giver of all good gifts. The redeemer of our lives. The restorer of all things broken. We acknowledge your supremacy, your sovereignty over us and this house of worship. Heavenly Father, as we have gathered for today's service, we pray that the Holy Spirit will move mightily amongst us. We pray that every man, every woman, every child, every boy, every girl, everyone online and outside will encounter you in the name of Jesus. 
Holy Spirit, have your way. Touch us. Convict us. Heal us. Deliver us. Transform us mightily this morning. In the name of Jesus. That everything that we say and do today, oh Lord, glorify you and you alone. In Jesus' name we are afraid. Hallelujah. If you know that you are happy to be in the presence of the Lord, I want you to put your hands together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are welcome to today's service. Good morning to those online. When you are on site, you are welcome to today's service. Before we take our seats, I want us to pray for our great country, Nigeria. Actually, yesterday I had a prayer point. But the Lord dropped a verse in my heart, Jeremiah 29, 11. It's a familiar scripture. I'm sure we all know this, the, um, the scripture. It says, for I know the plans that I have for you. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you, to give you a future and a hope. And when God dropped this scripture into my heart, you know, I immediately thought about the Israelites and when they were in captivity. And I was like, ah, are we going to stay long in this period for like 70 years? You know, and I really struggled with that scripture. But early this morning, God ministered to me that it's not the number of years. It's the assurance that comes with the, his promise. That he has plans for us as a nation. It's the assurance, the confidence that we have that God has plans for us. So in light of that, I just want us to lift up our hands, lift up our voice and just begin to thank God for Nigeria. For the good plans that he has for his intention, for his will, for his desire, his purpose for Nigeria. No matter what we're experiencing, no matter what we are seeing, God has good plans for us individually and collectively as a nation. I want us to thank God for his plans for Nigeria, for his purpose for Nigeria. I want us to thank God because God's plan, it, they are reliable. God's plans, they are dependable. God's plans, they are worthy to rely on. No matter what we're experiencing, no matter what we're seeing. I want us to thank God for Nigeria. That his plans for this nation, they are reliable. They are dependable. They are worthy to hold on and worthy to trust on. Hallelujah. I want us to thank God because we know that he is in control. We know that he's in control. The bills may be piling up. There may be challenges financially. We may seem overwhelmed. But the confidence that we have is that God is in control. And he will not leave us or forsake us. The same God that promised the Israelites. And he fulfilled that promise and brought them out to captivity. That same God is still on the throne. He is faithful. And we judge him faithful this morning. That he will see us through this period. He will see us through this storm. He will hold on to us. He will not leave us. He will not forsake us. In the name of Jesus. Finally, I want us to pray for families that are struggling, especially this period. Families that are struggling. That do not know where the next meal will come from. I want us to join our faith this morning and pray. That God will show himself strong on their behalf. That they will not be weak. They will not be weary. They will not lose hope. But they will stand on the promise of God. That the same God that has promised to see us through. The same God that has said he has good plans for us. He is faithful to confirm his words. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Before we stop, I just want you, from the depths of your heart, just speak something positive to Niger about Nigeria. Just for some few seconds. Something positive. Thank you, King of Glory. Nigeria will be great again. Nigeria will prosper. Nigeria will take our place in the Committee of Nations. Nigeria will be the pride of all nations. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Before you take your seat, I want you to say hello to the person next to you, either by your left and your right, and welcome the person to church. Tell that person that you will have an encounter with Jesus today. You will meet with Jesus today. And please have your seat. Hallelujah. I'd like to quickly um, call upon our brother for the Bible study review for the week. Can we please put our hands together for brother Oluwa Tobi Ade Doja.
Um, let me start by sincerely appreciating Senior Pastor and the Leadership Council for the opportunity given me to undo the Bible review for today. Um, during the course of the week, we read from the book of Leviticus 25, Mark 10 to 14, Psalms 45 to 51, Proverbs 10, and then Numbers, Numbers 1 to 10. But I'll be taking my review from the book of Mark chapter 14. Um, the book of Mark chapter 14 um, detailed the account of the woman that poured a alabaster box of ointment to anoint Jesus. Um, while I was reading it, I was gleaning some lessons from it because um, the people were complaining that why would she give that costly um, ointment to anoint Jesus? And there was even an account of the Bible where Judas Iscariot was saying that they ought to have taken that money and then given it to the poor. But then for me, one of the lessons I drew out from there is that um, only the best is good enough for our Lord. Only the best. Nothing is too much. I believe that we are redeemed um, at no cost, but our service to God would come at a cost. Sometimes God um, demands our time. Sometimes we demand our resources. But let's see that our service to God, I see it as a proof of our love to him. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5 verse 15, it says that we should not longer live unto ourselves, but we should live for the one who loved us and gave himself for us. Another lesson I glean from that is that God still deserves our best, even in lack. Hallelujah. So, and one of the other stories that um, I would say resonates with that is the woman that gave a two might. So Jesus Christ did not say, oh, because she was a, she was a widow, okay, just let's, let's not allow her give. But even a widow that had just two might, she gave. So the, the story there is that God still deserves our best even in lack. And then lastly, our giving to God should be born out of our love and it should not be transactional. It should be that we are given because we love God. And of course, for him to have died, Jesus Christ to have died and rose again for our justification, he expects that we expend ourselves. Apostle Paul said, I'm ready to spend and be spent for the sake of the gospel. I believe that when we have this mindset, this notion, this um, outlook towards service, I believe we would offer more acceptable service to God and God will be pleased with our service. Thank you so much for the time. Please let's put our hands together again for Brother Tobi. He gave a very concise review. God is deserving of our best. God is not an afterthought. Hallelujah. Our service to God is proof of our love for him. Please let's put our hands together again for him. I'd like to welcome um, the King Dr. Benga and Sister Mary. They have a testimony. Can we please put our hands together for them? They are coming out together, but their testimonies are individually. Okay, so they will take it one after the other. Am I right? Please, let's start with the King Dr. Benga. Please, can you come this way? No, I have to hold on to it. Thank you very much. Hey, hallelujah, hey, hey, hallelujah, hey, hey, hallelujah, hey, oh, hallelujah, hey, hey, hallelujah, hey, hey, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ya 
that's what my song will be that's what my song will be that's what my song will be. oh hallelujah that's what my song will be that's what my song will be that's what Pastor Clinton told me I have three minutes. I'm not bothered. That song is not for me. I praise the Lord and I go. Uh, but I'm, I'm not conscious of time this morning because the Lord did wonderful things for me wherein I am glad. But suffice to say that a few months back, 2023, end of 2023, um, we came back from Ogere Remo at the burial of uh, the dad of... Um, in Yemisi Adelaja. And then, as I am feeling pains in my private part, um, I go to urinate, there is a sense of urgency, painful, and then I started to pee blood. Ah. I remember we stopped over somewhere in Benin where I eased myself. I turned to my wife. I didn't touch another woman. No. Oh, oh. <laughs> What's happening here? So I started to check it out and all. I was treated, it went away. To cut long story short, it came back quickly again. So I went for CT scan, first ultrasound scan, then CT scan, and they diagnosed me of uh, having kidney stones. Um, so pastor had some engagements. I didn't want to disturb the man of God. So when he was done, and I told him, ah, I, I could see that his heart sank, but you know, he, said, he prayed with me and for me and said, I will be praying for you. And then I remember the word of God. I will never leave you nor forsake you. He said, I will be praying for you. I don't know how he felt when he dropped me off and went home. But I was dancing. I was dancing because he said some things that were powerful and encouraging. Anyway, we did the scan and they confirmed that. So all that time I was in pains and all that. The urologist said I should take some medication, um, reduce the, the pain and all of that. Every now and then I was still peeing blood. So one day, while I was already planning to go for surgery in Lagos, when we go for the holidays and all of that, one day, I just heard the voice. The Bible says, the, vo the voice of the Lord, Psalm 29, I think from, from verse 4. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is majestic. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon in pieces. Even Lebanon skips as a calf and Syrian like a wild ox. Wow. I just had the, that voice. I just had the voice that said, go back to the clinic and go and do another scan. And we had that department in my hospital, so I went back. As, I, as the doctor was doing the scan, he knew my history and was checking for the stone. I was laughing in myself. You don't argue with the professional. I am one, so I don't argue. But I was telling him in, in my spirit, I was telling the doctor in my spirit, you are in trouble today, you won't find anything. Yeah. I mean, you won't find anything. You won't find anything there. So he did the scan, he did the scan, and of course he didn't find anything. I said, God, don't catch you today. You know, we'll find anything. So, yes, can go ahead and clap for the Lord. <laughs> Apparently, the, the stone, a huge stone that was at the junction of my ureter and the bladder, if you know basic biology, that dropped obviously in the bladder, and that was what I was expecting. How it would go there, it was several times, maybe like 50 times bigger than the passage it would pass through it passed. I don't know if the audiovisual people are flashing it there. It's here. So it's not story. You don't, you don't know under what cover you sit here. With all due respect to everyone here seated, that's your business. Uh, the Bible says, I know whom I, that I follow. Something like that. I know he that I follow. So I know under which cover I found myself. So the doctor didn't find that, that stone. And so, okay, so that night, that night, at home again, or the next day, I just felt, I just wanted to pee normally, so I went to the toilet. As I peed, I just knew in me, as I knew in me, I knew, something came out of me. I didn't see it, I didn't hear any sound, there was no drama about it, but I knew something came out of me. So I could not, I looked in the toilet, I could not see anything, so I, I went in, I always have gloves, wore my gloves, and got light, and I looked, in, and I saw the object, if it's on the screen there, and then I picked it out, of course kidney stones. I want to give the Lord all the glory. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So let's take Sister Mary's testimony. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, he's still on this same ground. I came to testify of how the Lord gave me a miraculous job and uh, some happenings in my office. It was a really toxic environment, as, in, as if there was a struggle for my seat and my position. And um, apparently, a place where you're working, they'll ask you, are you on high drugs? Are you crazy? Are you mad? You know, all those type of settings and all that. And you'll be subordinated, you know? So uh, I, it came to a point, and um, I, there was a time I had a dream. In the dream, my MD was telling me that you're not competent, you're this, you're that. I will deal with you. I gave you this test. You must do this test. If you fail, that is it. So as she left, the spirit is like light came to me. The spirit now said, but she didn't give you any tax. So why is she using to judge you? She's giving you a score based on which tax. So I saw her. I said, madam, please come, come, come. You said that you are going to score me, but you didn't give me any tax. So what are you using to score me? As I said, she started staggering, staggering. I started speaking in tongues. She staggered until she fell down. I woke up. And then two days later, I came to the office. She's asking me to resign. So I, I felt pain, and I was like, what did I even do, you know? So I had to call someone that this is what is happening. What should someone say? Don't resign. If you resign, they won't pay your salary. Just let them sack you. This, if they won't, don't want you, another. So I called someone. The person now said, you have to live there now. He said, you are not liked in that place. Thank God that nothing bad has happened to you. He said, how much is your monthly salary? I told him, he said, right now, I'm sending your two months salary to you. Live there immediately. And I'm going to place you on a salary until you get another job. I'll be paying you the same amount that they pay you until you get another job. And so that was how I left. And I was, that same month, he paid me twice. End of that month, it was middle of the month, actually, like 11th. End of that month, he paid me again, the same person. That's three. Then my company that was not supposed to pay me now paid me. That's four salary in a month for doing nothing. You know, and pastor said it. He said, when we had capacity prayer, he said, the wind is blowing. And you are going to be paid by a company, places that you did not work for. But he made a statement, he said, it's not a call for laziness. You know, that gave me confidence. And, I, and what God did for me, what actually brought healing, that thing disturbed me because it was like I was grieving and I noticed that I was beginning to walk in unforgiveness and, and my husband would say you have to forgive them because I know the circumstances what I went through and everything and you know I had plans it was at the peak of executing my big dream for the company that I was asked to leave so the Lord told me that you are like someone that had a great destiny and his destiny was cut short that's why you are grieving like this but you just have to let go my testimony is this I couldn't let go. I wasn't sleeping at night, but pastor preached a message. He said the, the, the topic, I didn't know the topic, but my husband called someone that I need to hear this message. I was in children's church. He said the, the stone which the builders rejected have, has now become the chief cornerstone and everything he was saying that it was about me. And I tell you, as I left the service, that's how that, that pain, that grief, that unforgiveness, everything just disappeared. Now to cap it up, <laughs> to God be the glory. As I'm speaking to you on the 15th, I'm going to be resuming as the general manager of an international company. Hallelujah. <laughs> so the glory of God. <laughs> In fact, yesterday I was talking to my chairman and yesterday he told me, he said, what would I call you? It's okay, you are, the, you are the assistant CEO. He was telling me that, okay, whatever decision you make, he said, anything you want, don't be shy. Anything that will make your work easy. He said, you have to get a new phone because he tried calling me. He said, just go and price a new, it, you know, and you know, <laughs> the, the beauty is this. He showed me the organogram of the company. I'm at the top there. Every other person is on that. There's nobody yeah. that is higher. And I, I just want to give God the praise because where I was, I was IT manage, manager down there. And IT manager position is down there and I'm up here now. So I just, when, when they, I just want to encourage somebody. There is grace in this house. Hallelujah. When pastor speaks a word, don't, if you take it, many words have just, you have been allowing the, the grace to fly, to just waste. Don't allow the grace to waste. Catch it. Catch that grace. It will work for you. Blessed be Hallelujah. Please let's put our hands together. This is the year of restoration. God is restoring her health. He's restoring our jobs, our careers, our businesses. Just key into this world. This is the year of restoration. 
What is it that you have lost? What has been stolen? What has been taken from you? What has been held bound? God is in the business of restoring. If only you be believe. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together for the testimony. <clears throat> the King Benga, Sister Mary, your testimony it means permanent in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I'd like to call on the new wine choir. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Good morning, church. Please, or the visual, can you help me with the book of okay, Exodus 33, 14 and 15? And it says, and he said, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. Verse 15. Then he said to him, If your presence does not go with us, do not bring us up from here. Praise the Lord. This is when God told Moses and the children of Israelite to leave Mount Sinai and they were stubborn about it but at the end of the day Moses said something to God he said your presence needs to go with us this morning the choir have a song to sing about the presence of God it's a year of restoration but I want to ask you a question this morning does the presence of God go with you you're asking for restoration restoration you need rest you need breakthrough you need this does the presence of God go with you as a choir minister, listen and be blessed. Thank you. It's nothing like your presence, Lord. All I want is to be with you. There's nothing like your presence, Lord. All I want is to be with you. There's nothing like your presence, Lord. All I want is to be with you. There's nothing like your presence, Lord. All I want is to be with you. Presence, Lord, all I want is to worship you. 
worship you. There's nothing like your presence, Lord. All I want is to worship you. Your presence, Lord. Oh,
Celebrate the presence of the Lord in this place. Also, please help to appreciate and celebrate the new wine. You can do better. Celebrate the new wine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you all. Please, you may be seated in the presence of the living God. We're glad to have every one of us here in the presence of the Lord this morning. We trust that the Lord will do us good and establish his eternal counsels in our lives in Jesus' name. I got an envelope on my stool this morning. Pastor Tunji, I cannot thank you for pastoring me well. That's what is written on the envelope. Thank you for being a father indeed. May God continue to uphold you, sir. Amen. So, I'm yet to open the envelope, but I would like to appreciate the person who dropped this for me. Thank you. The Lord bless you. Bless all that is yours and distinguish you in Jesus' name. This morning, I'd like to share with us and then I'll be praying for some people. Um, I'd like to share on what I call divine purpose for wealth. Divine purpose for wealth. Let us pray. Father, we thank you this morning. We well, thank you for your mercy we thank you for your greatness in our lives we thank you for all that you do in us all that you do with us all that you do through us you are shaping us into your likeness you are seeing us in the light of your son jesus the blood of jesus is continually speaking over our lives and so you don't see us as unholy and unworthy before you. You see us in the light of the accepted and acceptable sacrifice of your son. When you see us, you see your son. When you see us, you see the blood that speaks better things than the blood of Abel speaking over our lives. You don't see us in the light of our frailties and shortcomings and weaknesses. And for this, we are grateful. No man can stand in your presence. No power of this age can please you. But you are the one walking in us to will and to do of your good pleasure. You are the one showing us mercy. You are the one supplying us grace on a daily basis that we may use your nature and your attributes deposited in us to walk a walk that is pleasing in your sight and lord we ask of you this morning as we look into your word and challenge the saints and bring conviction to hearers we ask that lord you anoint your word as we speak it as we teach it as we preach it let your word go forth with power that the faith of the hearers 
physically present, remotely connected, that the faith of the hearers may not be in the wisdom of man, in the eloquence of human expression, but that the faith of all these hearers may be in your power. We thank you, Father, for answers, and we give you the glory because we are prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. So I'd like to start reading from Luke chapter 12. Luke and chapter 12. I'd like to read from verse 13 to verse 21. I'm reading from the King James Version of the Bible. Luke chapter 12 from verse 13 to verse 21. And one of the companies said unto him, Master, speak to my brother that he divide the inheritance. So apparently there were at least two brothers here, members of the same family, and probably the father, the head of the family, you know, just transited, uh, died. And so they had come to the time of sharing the inheritance. And so um, one of the brothers, probably the younger one, I can only assume, and probably the younger one was asking Jesus to talk to the older one to make sure that he, the younger one, gets his own part of the inheritance. So he says, Master, speak to my brother that he divide the inheritance with me. And he, that is Jesus, said to him, Man, who made me a judge or a divider, an arbiter over you? And he said to them, that is now he turned away from this sibling and turned towards his own disciples, the disciples of Jesus. Just like we've been addressed here this morning. And he said to them, take heed, that is be careful, watch it. And beware of covetousness. Covetousness in another, put another way, is greed. Covetousness, the Bible makes us to understand, is idolatry exalting things over God and so here he says to his disciples take heed and beware of covetousness for a man's life and probably more aptly put a man's worth does not consist in the abundance of the things which he possesses and he speak a parable unto them saying the ground of a rich man so the man was already rich wealthy but he was expecting more. The ground of a rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought, he started to plan within himself. He started to imagine within himself. Uh, knowing what he has sown in his probably cornfields or whatever form of a Greek business he's into. He felt with the level of what I have sown in the seed time, what will come back in the harvest time will be mammoth, will be heavy. Probably unprecedented. God, when he began to look at the breakdown of the things he planned to do, he was expecting something he had not experienced before. God, he says here, the ground of a rich man brought forth plentifully and he brought a thought within himself, saying, what shall I do? Because I have no room. So, had no room meaning no precedence to what he was about to experience. He was expecting a harvest at a level he had never experienced before. Just like someone was, who is used to having savings at the level of 1 million in the account, 5 million naira in the accounts. Now you did a business, you did a deal, you did a contract, and they say your portion of it is maybe 250,000 US dollars. You begin to imagine immediately, how do they open for a foreign currency domiciliary account? Did they open in euro? Did they open in pounds? Did they open in dollars? It's like I have to go and see my account officer tomorrow. If, like I have to go to the bank myself. I cannot handle this on the phone. So, so you begin to imagine, begin to plan. That's what this rich man was doing here. So he says, what shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. And he said, this will I do. I will pull down my bands. Because the bands he had, had capacity for a level, but did not have the capacity for what he was expecting. I will pull down my bands. Bands are storage facilities. He said, I will pull down my bands and build greater or bigger larger 
bands with capacity. Maybe the bands he had, let me use yam, a, a yam trader, yam farmer. He had bands that could store maybe like 500 tubers of yam, but he knew for the additional land he used for the yam um, season, he's expecting at least 5,000 tubers. So apparently 5,000 tubers harvest will not be put in a 500 capacity barn. So he says, this I will do, I'll pull down my bands and build greater. And there I will bestow, where will I, be, um, there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, uh, you are used to Naira all this while, 5 million Naira savings, making mouth. Now 250,000 US dollars is coming. And you immediately calculate, why is this dollar coming down? Why, who are the people praying for this dollar to come down? Now that for the first time, I'm expecting dollars to come. Is this not the time the dollar should be going up? Go across 2,000, move to 2,000. After all, one television station, they were prophesying that this red dollar would become like 2,000. What? Who are the people praying for the thing to go down to 1,000 naira? Why? Who is against me? So, he said, I will say to my soul, soul, calm down. Thou hast much goods laid up for many years. The savings you used to have was just maybe like one year, one and a half years. What is coming? Ten years cannot dent it. He said, so calm down. Thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease. Eat, eat, drink, and be merry. When I greet some of my friends on their best days, I sign off with the term enjoy with an exclamation mark enjoy that was a season i used to when i greet people i would say emma badun then i changed it to eku labet so when i greet my wife eku labet will say what kind of greeting is that can't you look for better greeting i said but you you are labeting do you know the meaning of labet you are enjoying your plate is full you are licking your stew that is lab, eku labet he said no 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 don't give me those kind of greetings give me better greeting so anytime i'm calling my wife i'm conscious I don't take eku labet to this person no just tell her something maybe she's even watching now so from time to time i just think of something new and packaging and used to greet people so but consistently over the time i sign off when i pray for people on their bad days enjoy so that's the mind of this rich guy here so he said um no let's get back to that verse 19 and i will say to my soul so that has much goods laid up for many years take thine ease come down Enjoy yourself. You've been working hard all this while. Eat, drink, and be merry. Throw parties. People at your level. People at the level you have attained unto. Invite them from time to time to your house. Let them see what the Lord has done for you. You know, it makes me remember a story I read some years ago. A man met an old school friend. Met at, um, they met at a place. I don't think it was an occasion. So, the old school friend was casually dressed, wore Ankara, all leather slippers so and this other friend was thinking ah this guy that was so influential and powerful so intelligent at school that after all i'm looking more dressed than he is god has lifted me so he greeted his friend his great friend he could see that the friend was looking good but he sized him with the ankara so he said okay ankara well it's okay so he said ah thank god so he started to tell his friend what the lord has done for him that even he came with his jeep it's a, it's a Range Rover sports jeep. And uh, so when they finished talking, his friend just uh, gave him maybe like a complimentary card that anytime you have the time, you can just visit me in my little space. So when they got to the car park, he saw his friend's car just looking like someone that was struggling in an everyday vehicle. And here was his car, newly waxed. SUV, Range Rover Sports, waxed. You know, you know how the wax vehicles, you take some of those wax, and then after you've washed it, cleaned it, put it in the sun, then the way you wax your shoes. They also wax cars. I remember my dad used to have some of those car waxes. So you know, there are also car vehicle waxes. So you smear it all over. Then you take some dry napkin, and when you begin to put it all over, you begin to see the thing glitter. The metal of your vehicle glitter, the paint shining. So the guy had his ring over spot. He said, after all, my, my friend will see that God has done great things. We're not on the same level. So he greeted the friend. They greeted themselves, exchanged banters, and went. So after a while, 
He, so he said, the friend asked him, so where do you work? He said, ah, that I'm an executive director in this company. He said, do you know the chairman of the company? He said, no, that is like the chairman operates by proxy. So he gave him. So when he saw the card, he gave him. He said, ah, this. He saw the card looked. So one of those days he went to visit his friend. It was in an estate. So when he got to the estate, I mean, he got to the gate, he said, oh, my friend is even living in an estate. I mean, I'm living in a very posh environment. Uh, living by myself. So when he got to the estate and said he's looking for so, so, so he saw the way the security people, everybody changed. They started to salute. They start, quickly opened the gate. So he was wondering, uh, who is this? Ah, these tenants must be very nice to all the security people. Though, like, and this. So, um, so he drove through several houses in the estate, got to his friends. So when he saw his friends, ah, <laughs> the, the house did not look like the vehicle he saw. A few weeks earlier. Ah, then entered. When he entered, he saw luxury. So he started to advise himself and his opinion of his friend that looked like beneath him when they met. He started to adjust it gradually. Then the madam of the house was going open the. He saw the madam was well taken off. You, you know when some people, they say some people in the southeast, when they want to show their opulence and wealth. Do you do that with your own wife? When they want to show their opulence and wealth, just look at their wives. You will see where investment. Or God, Dick in here, he will call his wife my treasure box. Meaning if you don't, if you don't value him, when you see his wife, you will advise yourself. That's what, that is the meaning of that. So, so the summary of that was when he entered his friends, he even realized that his friend was the chairman of the company where he was executive director and was boasting and bragging. Then he realized that... Seeing people is not enough to evaluate people. By the time he left that place that day, he started realizing that even his waxed SUV, he was still paying the bank monthly for the money he used to put together. He was still paying the bank more. And he realized that his friend owned the entire estate, massive luxury estate. So he advised himself from that day. And he realized that they are really, in fact, he started using Sasa sa, sa for his friend. When he realized that his, his friend, old schoolmate, was the chairman of the company where he's working. So back to this story in Luke. Verse 19 again. I mean, from verse. Yeah, I will say to my soul, so thou hast more goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. Enjoy, have fun. But look at God's verdict here. Was wealthy without a doubt, had means without a doubt, greater means were coming his way. Because even before greater means came his way, the passage already highlighted that he was already a certain, not ambiguous, not one in the number, a certain rich man. But God said to him, thou fool. Are there people who are wealthy in their own sight and God has an opinion that they are fools? There are people who have means, have savings in naira, in euros, and dollars. But when God looks at them, they are fools. I think someone who wants to be wise in this life will want to reckon with the opinion of God about his or her life. It also makes me to re uh, 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 remember when you study in Revelation, one of those churches. I think when you read Revelation chapter 3 from about verse 15, verse 16, I was talking about a church there. The church of Laodicea. I think I need to read a part of that. From the beginning of that passage, Revelation chapter 3. We'll get back to this Luke chapter 2 and 12 verse 20. But let me read that. Revelation chapter 3. From verse 14 on to the angel. Angel also means pastor. It was a message to the leader of the church. So it was to the angel also means unto the pastor, the shepherd of the church of the Laodiceans. Right. These things here, the amen. The faithful and true witness. This is another dimension of the revelation of Christ. He's revealing himself to this particular church as the faithful and true witness. The beginning of the creation of God. He said, I know thy works. You are church people, you are church members, you are church leaders, you are church deacons, you are church ministers, and church pastors, church general overseer, serving overseer, senior pastor, lead pastor, whatever the nomenclature. He said, I know thy works, that thou art neither 
cold, nor hot. Cold in terms of you don't care about the things of God at all. Frozen, congealed, no passion for the things of God. When they mention Arsenal, as in no, you'll be excited, you'll be animated. That Arsenal just beat the enemies, played away match, they, they beat them thoroughly, major uh, opposition. So when they talk about football, he, you see the eyes will dilate, he's excited. The passion is pressed, the passion button is pressed. And but here, to the things of God, he said, I know thy works, you are neither cold, frozen, congealed, no hot, you are not on fire, passionate for the things of God. He said, I would that you are cold, frozen, you don't care for the things of God, or you are hot, you are on fire, zealous for the things of God. He said, But I would, you choose one side. I don't, God hates mixture. People want to mix things, mix religion, mix the word based ministry with some funny signs and wonder ministry he said pastor my pastor teaches but he's not into signs and wonders so i advise myself on tuesday thursday there's that other ministry close to my house i go there for signs and wonders then by friday evening i go for prophetic ministration where they tell me who my enemy is where they tell me how to deal with my enemies where they give me the seven measles i will use to to to, to oh to <laughs> To crush my enemies. I would. So God hates mixture. He doesn't like one from this and one from that. And lump everything together. What can be called in some quarters syncretism. You practice this and practice that. You practice in, in oil. You drink. A mantle. You tie around your neck. I think I've told us one I house. A stranger that came visiting my friend many years ago. In uh, Old Jerry apartment. And then my friend had traveled so and this stranger had planned to spend the night with my friend my friend lives in canada now so i had to house him so i brought out my camp bed like scouts bed bunk bed you can i mean um, scout bed you can collapse it so i set it up for him and put a pillow there and so he was in my room with me so in the night i wanted to go and use the restroom and so i put on the lights and to find my way out of the room and then i saw this stranger he had an handkerchief white handkerchief tied to his ankle he had a white handkerchief tied to his neck. He had another white handkerchief tied to one of his wrists. I was wondering, what, what have I done to myself in this place? Then I remember one of those churches where they donate and distribute and sell handkerchiefs. They call them mantles. Ah, I said, oh, so I've housed one of those people in my room this time. I just shake my head for him and entered my, went to the restroom. I will that you are cold so that I know that this one is really an unbeliever. I will that you are hot so I know that this one is on fire for me. But people who mix in the lounge, they blend. In the church, they blend. When they go to the nightclub, they know the lingo there. In fact, they spend more in the nightclub than they spend in the house of God. They know them as freebies. Hey, our God don't come. Club go, go, go enjoy tonight. So God says, I will that you are really cold. So that when we go for evangelism, we know that this is a sinner. But when we go for evangelism, before we talk one, you talk three. Before we quote John chapter uh, three, you're already quoting first John chapter three. That John chapter three is the one for Jesus. That first John chapter three is the one for you, the believer. You yourself lay down your life. Some people are dangerous people. So God said, I, I don't like mixture. I will that thou art hot or cold or hot. Let's move on. So then because thou art lukewarm. Lukewarm is a mixture. You take hot from the furnace, from the stove, from the fire. And then you take also from the fridge and mix it up. Lukewarm. So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew you. Like vomit out of my mouth. And then look at the reason why God figures out that this, though these people are a people of church and the leadership and the workforce and the membership amongst the first timers, they are people of church, they have church bands, they have church anklets, they have church and stickers, they have church promos, they have um, all kind of churches on their social media uh, 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 um, handles. 
But this is the reason why God said, look, how to spew all these things out of these kind of people out of my mouth. He said, because thou seest, I am rich. Look at that. And this is the goal of many people. A goal to be rich, to be wealthy, to be regarded as wealthy, to be recognized as wealthy and respected as wealthy. And these people assess themselves. And God also brought his own assessment. But in assessing themselves, they said, I am rich. What I have in the account, I can be regarded as a millionaire. I am rich and increase with goods and have need of nothing. And look at the things they used to measure themselves. They were things. They were not virtues. They were not Christian virtues. They were not Christ-like virtues. It has to do with materialism. I am rich and increase with goods. I just bought a new car for my wife. I just surprised my wife on her birthday and gave her an all-expenses-paid uh, trip. We have friends, destination party. I called one of my cousins a few weeks ago, one of my first cousins, and then uh, he picked the call and said, he said, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not in my base. He's busy. He's been busy in England for almost 40 years. He said, I'm not in my base. He said, my wife just gave me a destination uh, um, package. We're in Morocco. He said, this Morocco is just like Europe. I'm enjoying myself in Morocco. I said, oh, beautiful. Enjoy. Go ahead. He said, I will be here for the next seven days. My wife funded it. And that's beautiful. God has no problem with that. Well, you see, Christians, some Christians measure their lives, measure their worth, their sense of, oh God, you need to do such a thing for Jenny. Oh, Luchi. Huh? <laughs> so they size themselves, I'm in increase with goods and have need of nothing. And then look at the divine perspective there. He said, and knowest not that thou art wretched. How can a man size up himself as wealthy? And God says, no, but you are rich, wretched. Think about it. I'm not in a hurry this morning. What will make a man look at himself? Look at the paraphernalia around his life. Look at his job. Look at his house. Look at his vehicles. Look at the glow on the skin of his family members. And conclude, I am rich. But God looks down and says, Rechi. That's one of the slangs from my secondary school. Rechi means a wretched person. And this is what God is saying. He said, no. That's not the way I see you. You are not increased, really. You are not really rich as you ought to be rich. He said, you are wretched, number one. Two, you are miserable. It's terrible. I thought money makes people feel cool with themselves, enjoy, happy. He said, no. But I look into the recesses of your heart. You are miserable. Number three, you are poor. A rich man is called poor by God. According to what? Number four, you are blind. He has natural eyes to assess his worth, assess his bank statements, assess his vehicles, his properties. But God says, no, you are blind. You are not seeing what I'm showing you. Said, and you are naked. How can a rich man with baban? And I have quite some of those baban rigas in my, in my wardrobe. Have heavy baban riga, heavily embroidered. And God is saying, no, but you are naked. Next verse. I counsel thee. And that's one of my work. That's part of my work here this morning. To counsel people who have a wrong value system to their lives. Who size up their lives according to certain parameters that make them, the more you look at those things, the more you are pushed away from God. The more you see your bank account, the more you see the value of your properties that you bought and forgot. In, you just said, just abandon that one. That was a long term investment. God, he said, I. He said, I counsel thee to buy of me gold. So God has no problem with material wealth. But he says, the one that is tried in the fire, refined, the dross, the corrupting influences that have been taken out so that you can have true wealth. He says, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich. So the problem is not the riches. The problem is the parameters to measuring the wealth. The problem is not the riches. The problem is how you attain it and how you think by riches you have attained. I've told us in previous teachings in this series, riches should never be a goal for a Christian. Wealth should never be a goal for a Christian. Even where you want it, it is so that it can be a tool to an objective. 
a means to an end. And time permitting me tonight, we'll look into about two or three of those means. I mean, those ends. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich and white raiment. So God wants to give us wealth. God wants to give us riches. But he has conditions attached. They are caveats attached. That thou mayest be clothed and white raiment. That thou mayest be clothed and that the shame of your nakedness do not appear. And anoint your eyes with thyself that thou mayest see. As many as I love... So even for these rich Laodiceans, rich pastor of the Laodicean church, rich associates of the Laodicean church, rich members of the Laodicean church, rich members of the workforce of the Laodicean church, the problem is not the riches, but God is concerned about the process and what the riches are used for. We'll look into some of that in a bit. As many as I love, and I really want to make them wealthy indeed, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous therefore, and repent behold i stand at the door and knock if any man hear my voice and open the door i will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me let's get back to luke luke chapter 12 thank you what god said to him thou fool who is a fool according to scripture the one who does not regard god psalm 14 from verse 1 psalm 53 from verse 1 the fool says in his heart there is no god it is not just the same it is the lifestyle the priorities a fool does not reckon with god a fool does not make god the arbiter of his or her life a fool does not reckon with God's word. A fool cannot imagine that God's word will determine how he or she handles his, his or hard and resources. A fool comes to church, but a fool does not live by what he's taught. A fool reads the Bible, speaks in tongues, but the fool does not make the word of God a final habitat. A final determinant of what he or she does. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Corrupt are they and they have done abominable iniquity and there is none that doeth good. Let's leave that. Let's get back to that Luke chapter 12. But God said to him, thou fool, you don't regard God in your life. You don't regard God in your wealth. You don't regard God in your plans. You don't regard God with the bigger wealth that is coming your way. I will build. I will do. I will pull down. I will build. I will say to my soul, calm down, eat, drink, and be merry. Enjoy. And God brings a divine perspective. Thou fool, this night, thy soul will be required of it, of thee. Meaning, the owner of the soul you can have the bands. You can have the bigger bands. You can have the bigger harvest. But the owner of the soul will also like to have his property. Your father cannot give you your soul. Your school cannot give you your soul. Your pastor cannot give you your soul. The soul of man belongs to his maker. And that's the living God. Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall be? Those things, I'm not claiming your land, claiming your bands, claiming the purple, I mean, the planned bigger bands, you can have them. But the one that is mine, I will collect it tonight. Then whose shall those things be which thou has provided? I'm talking not just describing someone here, I'm talking to someone in here. How do you live your life? For those of us who are here to attain to wealth, but we are trusting God to bring wealth into our lives, what do you want to do with it? What are your plans for what you are working for? What are your plans for what you have saved up? What are your plans for your investments? I'm not done with that passage. There's still verse 21 there. So it says, So is he that layeth up treasure for himself, thinks about himself, plans for himself you think poor people uh, poor people don't have this problem it will amaze you 
that some poor people are worse than this certain rich man. Because they are planning. Ah! Cha, 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 cha. God, forget about $250,000. Just give me fifteen. What I will do to that, my neighbor? That tells my children, see, go and tell your mama to buy pants for you. Go and tell your mama to buy better school uniform for you. Look at your slippers. Your, your feet are already showing map under the slippers. They don't eat finish. Go and tell your papa to buy. Ah, Lord, just give me 15,000 US dollars. What I will do to that, my neighbor? The sound system I will go and buy next cash and carry. And tune it to 7 over 10. And direct the speakers towards my neighbor. Ah. <laughs> it's yet to get 1,000 naira, but he's already planning for $15,000 and he's not planning anything special other than the neighbor. So is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. I've come to challenge us here this morning. Riches are not the problem. What are you planning to do with them? Increase is not a problem. But what is your plan for it? Deuteronomy chapter 8. I'd like to read from verse 15. To verse 18. It says here. The Lord who led thee through that great and terrible wilderness. Wherein were fiery serpents and scorpions and drought. Where there was no water, who brought thee forth water out of the rock, even from least expected quarters, God made things to happen for you. In COVID, your needs were supplied. In the very challenging times in our nation, you see, find out that you are able to eat what you want to eat, when you want to eat it, alongside with your family members. Needs supplied. He said, I mean, here, where, he said, who and drought, where there was no, and brought thee forth water out of the rock of flint, of flinty rock. Who fed thee in the wilderness with manna. Even where you did not sow. You did not have the opportunity to sow. Because this was a migrant community. Moving from place to place. Even where they sowed. They don't, didn't have enough time to wait for the harvest. They had to move on. Once the cloud of um, 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 pillar of fire or pillar of smoke moves. They move. Who fed thee in the wilderness with manna. With thy fathers knew not. That he might humble thee. And that he might prove or test thee. To do thee good. So when God tests you with riches. Tests you with opportunities. Tests you with resources. And you respond. His mind. He said that he might do thee good. At thy latter end. Thou say in your heart. My power and, my, and the might of my hand. Has gotten me this wealth. These riches. Verse 18, he says, but thou, and we'll stop here. He said, but thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. As God begins to bless your efforts. As young stars, God begins to bless your labors. Uh, and captains in industry, God begins to increase your effort. He said, remember, don't ever imagine it's your strength, it's the might of your hands. You will remember the Lord thy God. For it is he that giveth thee power to get. Power to create wealth. Power to get wealth. And with a purpose. That he may establish his covenant. Which he swore. Unto the fathers. Another passage of scripture I'd like to read here. First Timothy chapter 6. We begin to dovetail into some of the things I'd like to share here. God's purpose for wealth. First Timothy chapter 6. I'd like to read from verse 17. To verse 19. First Timothy chapter 6, from verse 17 to verse 19, it reads, and I quote, Charge them, that is, challenge them, instruct them that are rich in this world. What the world uses to measure riches and wealth, the indices the world uses to measure riches and wealth. You are rich according to the world's definition. You are wealthy according to the world's parameters. He says, now receive this charge from the Lord. Charge them that are rich in this world, that they be not high-minded. To be high-minded is to be haughty in your mind, in your opinion and estimation of yourself. To be high-minded is to be arrogant. You feel you are so high up there, 
You feel other people are beneath you unless there are people who show as much paraphernalia and evidences of having up to what you have. They can match you or they have more. So it says that such rich people according to this world should not be high-minded or haughty or arrogant. That's number one. They should not trust in uncertain riches. They should not put their hope, their expectation in riches that are uncertain. He said, but that they should trust in the living God who giveth, who giveth us richly all things, including material things, including finances, including houses, including vehicles, including international travels for vacation, including destination parties. If you are so endowed, who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. But you see, when he gives, he has an instruction. He has instructions with it. And you see that here. So you want to be rich and you want God to be involved? He said, don't be arrogant. You want to be rich and you don't want to lose God as you try to acquire riches? He said, don't be high-minded. You want to be rich and you want God to be in the equation of your life? You know, Jesus was saying some things in Mark chapter 10 and he said, how difficult is it going to be for rich people to enter into the kingdom? Peter and the other disciples, the Bible says they were surprised. They were marooned. They were flabbergasted. How do you mean? So we've left all and we are following you. He said, yes, what I mean is, how difficult is it going to be for those who trust? Mark chapter 10. For those who trust in their riches to be able to enter into the kingdom. So here, the instruction, if you don't want to get wealth at the expense of God, you don't want to have riches and lose God, you don't want to have material things and God is negotiated out of your life. Divine presence is taken out of your life. Divine presence is priceless. The divine presence is expedient. Divine presence is the greatest asset a human being can have. In a moment, you go to the car shop, you see the odometer of, your, of the vehicle you want to buy on 0000000. 000 000 000 000. You see nylon all over the seats, everywhere. You see the bonnet still sealed with nylon spread. The back side, uh, the booth cover um, uh, sealed with nylon spread. The moment you rev the engine, and zero, 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 zero becomes zero, 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 one. You remove one of the nylons of the driver's seat. The value of that vehicle is not the same again. So don't aspire for such riches that can take God out of your equation. God is glorious. God is priceless. Any material thing you have, in one moment, it can be devalued. One government policy can devalue it. Listen, if you are going to carry sustainable wealth, you are going to carry some wealth that is even pleasing in the sight of God and is even willing and eager to trust you with more. Look at the instructions he gives. To such people who have the riches of this world, who are rich according to this world, number one, what do they do? I've told us the don'ts from verse 17. Don't be high-minded. Don't be haughty. Don't be full of yourself. Don't be arrogant. Over the past 10 days, I've been in two churches for their, um, for their special programs. I spoke in one. I attended the other. And the amazing thing is some of the people who attend to us, they have high flyers in the society. While I was in Lagos, I came in Friday night. While I was in Lagos, as I came out of my hotel room, I saw one of the guys who was menacing to me as protocol in Benin. So dead up in suit. I said, hey, what are you doing here? He was happy to see me. I said, oh, what? He said, yeah, I'm here for a training. We're about to move to Abuja. So we need to, you could see that he was well-oiled. He had a good job. The hotel I stayed in is a very good hotel, high-level hotel. And the guy was there. He just was about to check in and to be lodged. He said he was there for some training. What am I saying to us here? And then the other ministry where I was, was to attend in Lagos, some of those people who serve us food, some of those people who set up food for the ministers, um, Pastor Bakari invites to join him for dinner, for lunch. 
Pastor told us one of them, the husband has a Rolls Royce. They serve us food. Another one has, I, know, I had been seeing her for almost 20 years since I've been going to relate with Pastor Bakari. And then I realized a few weeks ago that she's the chairman of the board of a bank. She serves us food. Saying, sir. <laughs> Saying, ma. And I could see training there. I could see discipline. No matter what you have, according to the world's goods, in the house of God, be a servant. Heavy people in the society. Now, one time when I wanted to buy things for my dad's burial, my wife went to the stores of one of those women who serve us in Lagos. Heavy duty woman. <laughs> and they serve us food. Then they will ask, when I finish eating rice, they say, have you finished? They want to carry my plate. When I realize some of those things, I want to carry my plate by myself. <laughs> then they will carry, do, do you want fruits? Fruit salad? Do, do you serve you fruit or ice cream or tea? I said, me, I know be tea person. I'm not a tea person. There's one of my daughters who say that. I'm not a gala person. <laughs> so, my wife loves tea. She loves coffee. Me, I don't like hot things. So, so do we serve you ice cream? These are heavy, high net worth people in the society. And just looking at them, beyond the teachings in the conferences, just looking at them teaches me lessons. You want to be rich according to the terms of this world? Do you want to carry God with it? Do you want God to be involved? Or you want to run riots? Ah! My husband have Rolls Royce. Don't see me in this church again. Now go to that church where people with other Rolls Royce so that I'll pack my Rolls Royce next to their Rolls Royce. My own is um, uh, Rolls Royce Phantom. Uh, the, this one is the other. At least it's just two years apart. So that, that's okay. No, no, no. I pack. Then I have to trek to join something. No, no. Charge them that are rich in this world. That they be not high minded. They do not trust in uncertain riches. But in the living God who gives us richly all things. To enjoy jesus had no problem with riches some of the people who hung hung around jesus were wealthy people joseph of arimathea who provided a tomb to bury the body jesus used on earth the bible called him a certain rich counselor what he had designed for himself a tomb made out of carved out of a rock for himself when he saw that his master had died is who am i he can have it that they do good. You want to carry God with your wealth. You want to carry God with your riches. Do good. Be involved in good deeds. That they be rich in good works. God, does not, God is not really interested in what you have amassed. He's interested in what you do with what you amass. If you are amassing it so that bank staff can gain promotion true because i mean the brought your account to the bank you might not be rich towards god he said that they be rich in good works ready to distribute willing to communicate laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come that they may lay hold on eternal life why do you want to be rich why do you want to be wealthy what are you going to do with it Will you walk with these terms? First Timothy chapter 6 from verse 17 to verse 19. Or you have your own set rules in your mind. You are going to walk with that will disconnect God from your life and your wealth. God's purpose for wealth. Number one, God giving wealth. Divine presence sustainable wealth meaning such wealth that also still sustains god's presence carries god's presence number one such wealth that you aspire for such wealth that you already have must be used to honor and worship god 
If you are going to come to great estate in the sight of God, if God is going to give you with true and enduring wealth, if God is going to add to you, Jesus said there is no man who has forsaken father, and forsaken mother, forsaken children, forsaken houses, forsaken lands, forsaken wife, for, my, for me and for my kingdom, who will not in this world receive a hundredfold. God is interested in prospering his people, bringing great increase to his people. But according to these times, terms we have highlighted from Luke chapter 12 and also from 1 Timothy chapter 6 from verse 17 to verse 19. Number one purpose of God for your wealth is so that you honor and worship God with your substance, with your resources. Be rich. The language God, uh, Jesus used in that parable of a certain rich man, Luke chapter 20. I mean, Luke chapter 12, from verse 20 to verse 21. Be rich towards God. Be rich towards the things of God. The things that carry the signature of God. The things that carry the endorsement of God. The things where God can be found. Be rich towards God. Honor God with your substance. Look at this, Proverbs chapter 3, from verse 9 to verse 10. Honor the Lord. To honor is to regard. To honor is to revere. To honor is to respect. To honor is to reckon with. Honor the Lord with thine substance. Regard God, respect God, reckon with God. Worship the Lord with thy substance. And with the first fruits of all thine increase. And it goes on to say, and I, so shall thy bands. Look at the band of the other man. God said, look, I will take the soul. You can have the bands and the contents of the bands. But here, when you prioritize God, you honor God with your substance. You honor God with your increase. God is saying, I will be the one to secure your bands. I will load it myself. So shall thy bands be filled with plenty, and thy presses, your wine presses, your juice presses, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. And quickly here, understand this. Honor the Lord and worship the Lord with your substance. I would like to give an example of two people who actually gave to God. They are twins, we know them, Abel and Cain. They both gave to God. But you see, the giving was conditioned by the state of their hearts. So it's not enough to just bring out anything and give to God. When you are going to some places, you know that one of our leaders was telling us that he was in Abuja sometimes, met another of our leader, another of our members, and said, ah, that man in government, top government, you want to see her? You cannot see him like that, so you have to drop something. <laughs> he said, like, how much? He said, $3,000. It wasn't something he said, okay, let me go back home. He had it prepared. Then my question is, if God asked for $3,000, how many of us will have it prepared? And you know, say, let me go and come back. He just brought out the thing, counter, counter the thing, and give the thing, and nothing came out of it. <laughs> but let me leave that. But look at this here, Genesis chapter 4, from verse 1. And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother. So there were no two conceptions, but there were two bats. So one conception producing two bats. So twins. And she again bare his brother Abel. And Abel was a keeper of sheep. And Cain was a tiller of the ground. So the two of them were having resources from their work. They were having increase from their work. But look at how they handled their increase towards God. And in the process of time, it came to pass that came brought of the fruits of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel also brought of the first, of the first, as a matter of priority, the state of his mind. I need to give to God first. I don't want to save for myself first. I don't want to save for my children first. I need to give to God the things of God, the house of God first. Abel also brought, but he didn't bring an offering he brought firstlings the first that came out of the animals he took it to he took them to the lord and abel also brought and abel also brought of the um 
firstlings of his flock and of the fats thereof. And the Lord, look at the response of God to the two givers from the same womb, trained in the same house, taught in the same church, members, the same level of knowledge, but two levels of responses, both in their giving and in God's response. Look at this here. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. Because he gave the best. When you read our translations, you realize that he did not just give the first. He gave the best. He gave the fatted. It was like he was preparing what I'm going to give to God. I need to prepare it even through the duration of the pregnancy. Fatted calf was what he brought to the Lord. But Abel, unto Abel and to his offering. Did Abel give to God? Did Abel give to man? No. Abel also gave to God. But look at God's response. But unto Cain and to his offering, he had not respect, no regard. Because there was no honor. And Cain was very wroth or angry and his countenance fell. Two people gave to the Lord and they got different responses from the Lord. Because God saw one giving, came with honor, came with regard. Honor the Lord with your substance and with the first fruit. So as he was preparing, he was not just preparing an offering. He gave God the first. He gave God the fatted ones. Cain gave just. I didn't know they would take offering. I didn't know they would take offering. I didn't come with my envelope. I didn't come with my wallet. I didn't come with my phone to make online transfer. I didn't know they would take offering. Let, Let me keep quiet first. So you see here, our giving can also determine God's response. Quickly, for time now. What's the purpose of wealth? To honor God primarily. To worship God. You want to be wealthy? Are you thinking of God? You want to be rich? According to the riches of this world? Are you thinking of God? Is God in that equation? Is God in your plans? To honor him? Like Abel, not just to give towards anything God, like Cain. Quickly, number two, God's purpose for wealth, it is to establish covenant and advance the kingdom. And I take that context from Deuteronomy chapter 8, where it was saying when you begin to increase in your business, you increase in your career, you are promoted in everything you do, you are prospering, you are making money more than you even bargained for, and you begin to think in your mind, your strength, your intellect, you know you had a 2-1 in uni, that is why they are rating you like this in this company, you know you, you just miss first class by whiskers, that is why all this wealth is coming to you, so you begin to think it's your strength, it's your wealth that is bringing this wealth to you, and then he advises us, let's see that again, in Deuteronomy chapter 8, I'd like to read from verse 16 now to verse 18. Deuteronomy chapter 8 from verse 16 to verse 18. It says, Who fed thee in the wilderness with manna, which thy fathers knew not, that he might humble thee, and that he might prove thee or test thee to do thee good at thy latter end. So he had an end time agenda in mind. That look, if you honor me, this is what I will do for you eventually. And thou say in your heart, when those increase begin to come, my power, my intellect, my senses. You know, I'm very streetwise. I'm not only intelligent, I'm also brilliant. My power and the might of my hand has gotten me this wealth. Verse 18, he said, no. Remember the Lord thy God. It is he that giveth thee power, intellectual power, skill, power, power of goodwill with people. Power to get wealth. Power of creativity to get wealth. Why? That he may establish his own covenant. He has an agenda for releasing resources into our lives. He said that he may establish his covenant, which he swore unto our fathers as it is this day. And this applies on two levels. Meaning there are things he told our patriarchs in the faith. The likes of Abraham, the likes of Isaac, the likes of Jacob, the likes of David, the likes of Isaiah, of Elijah. The likes of Paul, of Peter. There are things he told them. And so that when we give and we realize in our mind that our wealth comes from the Lord. It is, God wants to perpetuate that covenant from generation to generation through our wealth. It is so that he may establish that covenant coming from that long line. But another way to this 
is that God wants covenants with every human being in every nation, whether they are illiterate or they are pensioners or they are aged or they are youngsters or they are teenagers. God wants to also have covenants with every human being. So he's saying when you have wealth, remember God has a plan for that wealth. He wants to establish covenants. The covenants he swore to the fathers. He wants to establish it with everyone in every nation, in every generation as it is this day. I want to read the message translation of verses 17 and 18. He said, if you start thinking to yourselves, I did all this and all by myself, I'm rich. It's all mine. <laughs> well, think again. Remember that God, your God, gave you the strength to produce all this wealth so as to confirm the covenant he promised to your ancestors as it is this day. And I'd like to challenge us here on this second level in using our wealth we want to have, the one we are already having, the more that is coming our way to establish covenant. I like to say this here, use your riches and wealth to draw people into covenant with the living God. Use your wealth as a tool for drawing people into the kingdom. Don't just think of vacation. Don't just think of family. Don't just think of your children. Don't just think of your spouse. Don't just think of your siblings. Don't just think of your parents. Think of those who need to come into covenant. And push your finances, a part of your finances, towards such agenda. And I'll give us some practical examples here. For example, even on social media, you can, if you want to escalate the awareness of your content, your broadcast, you can buy social media time, social media space. You can put your phone, you can say, a house of his presence, kingdom agenda in every space. And you say, pastor, I want to partner towards this. I'm committing my finances towards this. Social media broadcast. You can come in. We used to have TV ministry in this house from 2006, January till I think December 2018. But when the partnership dwindled, the support dwindled, and we didn't want to harass or bully or coerce anybody, we just let it rest. But I know we're going back on television. I believe God has given, I know God has given us a message for the television space. And we will get back there. On a higher, stronger level. Even cable television. In the mighty name of Jesus. You can commit your resources. And stop thinking of the vacation of the next five years. You have saved it up. It's a fool. The owner of the soul will require the soul tonight. You can have the five year vacation in five years. What will become of that five year vacation? I'm not wishing anyone will die tonight. But I'm simply saying put your priorities where God is involved. You can get involved in such things. Gideon International came here a few weeks ago, challenged us how souls are being saved, sinners are being transformed, and prisoners are being convicted as they go through copies of the Gideon's Bible. You can sponsor copies on the occasion of your birthday. Instead of going to a restaurant where each person you are taking there, the food will cost 30,000 naira per person, and you are going with 50 people. Why don't you even cut down the number of people to 25 and take the money up for the remaining 25 and give to us Gideon's International and say to us on the occasion of my bad day and you remember every time you get feedback from Gideon International you know that you committed a token towards that be rich towards God use your wealth to establish covenant Bible distribution sponsorship good platform and we're going to raise offerings towards that Gideon's International next week. We've told us, prepare for it. You can put your resources towards tracks publishing, tracks distribution. You make sure every week 1,000 tracks go out from house of his presence into communities, into neighborhoods. You make sure there are even machines, tools for evangelism. People want to do money. Crap. We have people in this house who go out for evangelism. Who go out for individual evangelism. Boss evangelism. Street evangelism. Marketplace evangelism. He said, Pastor, what do we need for these things? He said, look, we have box pickers. We need up to five more, seven more. He said, okay, I will buy five of those things. Commit your resources towards establishing covenant. Church transport services, for example. 
Do you know what we can do when we have like four buses, highest buses, coastal buses that we can deploy to various sections of the city and bring people to come and hear the word of God. And even as they are coming, they hear the word of God in the vehicles, in the coastal, in the buses. Do you know the lives that can be touched? Do you know the lives that can be transformed? Do you know the lives that can be impacted? Commit your resources towards establishing covenant. Well, begin to compare. Like the Bible says in Luke chapter 14, compare people on the highways. Come to a house of his presence and be convicted. Come to a house of his presence and be saved. Yeah, no, you know me, I'm a very shy person. Let your money give you boldness. I'm very shy. Even to talk to my husband, I'll be looking away and I'm talking to my husband. I say, I love you. I'm looking at speaker, but I'm talking to my husband. Let your money give you boldness. Let your money speak for you. Sponsor things for the kingdom of God. Church transportation services. We are planning probably before the end of this month. We want to set up food banks. People are challenged. I find it difficult to restrain from dipping hands into my pocket in several places across cities and just identifying with people. I went to visit my sister the last night of my time in Lagos. She came in from the US. And then I, as we were going, she said she had to enter an eatery. Young guys. This was around 11, 11 p.m. in Lekki. Two young, they just walked up. They just walked behind my sister. She came into the vehicle. I said, your friends, they are following you. She wasn't aware. I said, they are your friends, they are following you. And they were begging for money. At 11, past 11 p.m. I said, but we have to give them something. I said, even though the way I'm looking at this hairstyle, it, it, this hairstyle is not, it's not free. Man, when man has, you know those kind of funny hairstyle, like some of those people who have lost their minds on the road. Then my, my sister also said, but... The, the brother or the girlfriend or whatever could have made it free of charge for him. So, so from place to place, you see needs like that. And you have to attend to those things. What am I saying to us here? Give towards covenant things. We want to set up a food bank where we provide rice. We provide, we provide food. It could be raw. If, when professionals advise us, we know what to do. So that we know that at least people around us are not going hungry. There's hunger in the land. The purchasing power of men. I was told some time ago, one of my daughters in the house, university graduate, she said, oh, Pastor, I got a job. I said, How much do they pay you there? She said, 15,000. I said, Stop that job. Immediately. Until you get another one, I will be giving you 10,000 naira. Regularly. Stop that job, then I will see what church can also do for you. University graduate paid 15,000 naira. I mean, wickedness. Well, let me leave that. So there are people going through challenges. It's not everybody that wants to pose. Oh. It's not everybody, even though they are looking one kind, one kind. If you, I was, one guy came to meet me at the airport. I bought an item. He had to rush it to meet me at the airport. He said, Oga, look at my body. He said, in a body I get, I don't get engine. And he looked well built, taller than I am, looking muscular like a gym enthusiast. He said, Sir, now body where I get, there is no engine. I said, God will give you an engine. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is, people are going through. People are going through. So you can imagine we have a food bank. Every week, we can handle if maybe half a bag of rice, cook it, serve it. If, and the best among us, the one with the biggest vehicles among us, are the ones dishing the plate and serving the people. We're not thinking, eh, I me, mean, I've already provided the money. Let those boys in youth fellowship, let them go and be handling. No. I told you, people with Rolls Royce, they, 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 they serve us food where we came from. <laughs> Let nobody to be, be too big. Never attain to that level where you cannot run any errand for God. If you have to wash toilet, be the most ex Some churches in our nation, when, high court judge, commissioner, when you join their workforce, they start you in, in sanctuary cleaners. You wash toilet. When you finish washing, washing you report. Uh, sir, I finished, sir. Any other thing to do, sir? <laughs> but my concern is, let no errand. Some of us, I give us errands. I say, do this. Then I see some of you selecting. Even me, I'll just be looking at you. And I can look. And I can see. But I won't talk. But you have registered something in my mind. That is one. <laughs> we'll see. 
Some of us, we struggle with authority figures. You don't like somebody telling you what to do. You like to do your own thing at your own time. Even when they say, come to church 9 o'clock, that's why you think, why should I come 9 o'clock? Why? Why? Are we in hostel? Are we in boarding house? Why? <laughs> then you stroll in at 9.20. Just to beat that thing that I can come home, but not the time they told me to go. That is a struggle with authority. That's a struggle. You will lack authority. If you have it, you will lose it when you struggle with an authority chain of command. So we need food banks, for example, and we are working towards it. You can fund evangelistic initiatives. You can ask, how much is this Jesus crusade sell? And then we tell you, ah, sir, is, they said we shouldn't be using only anymore. It's 7 million naira. How much is it? 5.5 or so? He said, don't make that announcement again. I will take that one. You can fund evangelistic initiatives. You can single-handedly bankroll things. Some of us, we single-handedly bankroll unrighteous things for our girlfriend. That nobody must know. And you have your wife and children at home. You, you rent flat for girlfriend. But when they say, bring your tights to the house of God. And you say, uh, what are they even doing with this tight thing? What are they doing with this tight thing? I can't even see what they are doing with this tight thing. <laughs> but you see what you are doing to your girlfriend. That your wife must not know about. But we will soon blow the whistle. We will soon blow the whistle. I've been involved with Christ to the rural world in Ghana, Reverend Steve Mensa, since 2011. I've not been able to go in recent times because even the cost of getting to Ghana. My last time was 2021. He insisted that I had to come. I said, I don't like to come and we don't have anything to give. I don't want to come and then I'm a liability. To he said, no, you are one of our major partners. You have to. So that's the last time I went, 2021. And we used to be heavy supporters, heavy partners. Do you know Christ to the rural world? cost about 200,000 US dollars, 250,000 US dollars, 300,000 US dollars. Just carry your calculator on your phone and try to have an idea. And sometimes, a few individuals just say, Pastor, this is COVID period. We cannot even announce to church. But we have to do it. We can't break the chain. We've been doing this thing for every year. We have to do it. You see individuals funding 10,000 brand new cutlasses. One person. And say the give to rural farmers in some of those places. You see individuals sponsoring hundreds of sewing machines. And say and give to tailors and housewives in some of those rural communities. Mattresses, heavy, brand new mattresses. Sometimes individually funded. Sometimes some of those doctors, they have to move from Accra. They have to move by military aircraft. Move by helicopter. Funded by individuals. Let us carry the things of Jesus on our heads, in our hearts. I need to close. A third purpose for wealth is to do good. Giving to generous deeds. Becoming a human embodiment of the love of God. Let people who meet you meet the love of God. And you don't have to be the richest around. Let people, you can take up initiatives. Look out for one orphan in the house and say, look, I might not be able to pay for everything, but every month, 15,000. Every month, 20,000. I will give towards your school allowance. Look out for a widow in the house of God and look out for something you can do to wipe her tears away. And hear what the Bible says here. Proverbs chapter 28 from verse 8. And I mean, let me read first Proverbs chapter 14 verse 10, 31. He that oppresses the poor reproaches his maker. But he that honoreth the poor, he honoreth him. That is the poor. I mean, honoreth God has mercy on the poor. So what's the proof that we honor God? It's not just the substance we bring for Jesus' crusade, the substance we bring tithes and offerings. When you identify with the poor in their low estate, you are honoring God. Proverbs chapter 28 Verses 8 and 27. He that by usury, you take interest, you loan out money, you take interest on it. He that by usury and unjust gain increases his substance, he shall gather it for him that will pity the poor. That's serious. Meaning you think you are amassing something, but a, 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 something will shift 
and take that wealth away and give to someone who attends and shows pity to indigent people among God's people. Verse 28 says, I mean verse 27 says, He that giveth unto the poor shall not lack. Somebody say, I shall not lack. That you said it means you will give to the poor. Mm -hmm. Say it again. I shall not lack. lack. Oh, beautiful. So you are saying it by choice. He that giveth unto the poor shall not lack. But he that hides his eyes shall have many a curse. And look at Job. Job was a wealthy man. The Bible tells us that when you read Job chapter 1 from verse 1 to verse 3. So, but challenges of life came. He lost all the wealth, lost his children, almost lost his marriage, lost his health. But in his condition, his low estate, he remembered the good times. And he had this to say as I begin to close here this morning. Job chapter 29 from verse 1 to verse 4. And then I will jump and read from verse 12 to verse 16. Verse 1 to 4, verses 1 to 4, verses 12 to 16. Moreover, Job continued his parable and said, Oh, that I were as in months past. So, showing us that his afflictions were just months. But it looked like a whole lifetime. Oh, that I were as in months past, as in the days when God preserved me. When his candle shined upon my head. And when by his light I walked through the darkness of life. Verse 4. I, as I was in the days of my youth, when the secret of God was upon my tabernacle. Verse 12. Because he said, how did great wealth come to him? And what did he do with it? He said, because I delivered the poor that cried. The, I, I just don't like hearing the cry of the poor. That someone cannot pay the children's school fees. That the, someone's children, they've drove them from school. Because they've not been able to pay the school fees. One month pending. Drove them on the edge of exams. I delivered the poor that cried. And the fatherless. And him that had none to help him. The blessing of him that was ready to perish came upon me. And I caused the widow's hearts to sing for joy. I put on righteousness and it clothed me. My judgment was as a robe and a diadem. I was eyes to the blind. And feet was I to the lame. I helped people along the way. The blind to find their way to their destination. The lame to find their way to their destination. Verse 16. I was a father to the poor. I didn't look at them as beneath me. They are social miscreants. They are inferior to my class. We don't relate to people like this. I was a father to the poor. And the cause which I knew not. I searched out. Hallelujah. Look out for an indigent person around you. It could be in the local church. Actually the Bible says. When you read in Galatians chapter 6. It says do good to all men. Especially. Meaning, as you want to do good, prioritize. Especially to those of the household of faith. Don't lavish your wealth on town union, on old school union, on mbati mbati union, on a village union. People who don't care. People who are even envious of your wealth. People who are even wishing you die. Hoping that when you die, they will inherit those things. But I said, prioritize those of the household of God. Identity. Let me project that. Proverbs chapter, I mean, Galatians chapter 6. I think it's verse 6. Or is it 7 or 9? Somewhere there. Let me get it. So look out for an indigent person around you. It could be the, uh, one of your junior colleagues. The children are not going to school. You know. And here are your children enjoying lavish life. Take up some of those indigent people. Identify with them. It could be a one-off thing. It could be a regular thing. Identify with indigent people. Sponsor someone. Give someone a leverage. So you never know those who will really support you in your twilight years, in your old age, in retirement. Your children may be engrossed with their own issues. This one is in America. That one is in England. This other one is in South Africa. You say, ah, dad, you know, this is my new family. I need to take care of them. It might be one of those people you sponsored who will remember you and prioritize you. What is the purpose of wealth? Honor God. What is the purpose of wealth? Use it to establish covenant. 
what is God's purpose for wealth? To showcase the goodness of God. To be God's arms stretched forth. To be God's legs towards the needy. To identify with the poor and bear their burdens. The widows and bear their burdens. The orphans and bear their burdens. Let us not live alone. I remember there is a saying, they say, chop alone, die alone. Ah, me, I don't, me, I don't want that at all. But the reality actually is, everybody dies alone. They want to die with a whole bus load. <laughs> but that's the reality. So that's the challenge to us here this morning. Begin to review your pursuit of wealth, your desire for wealth. Is it in line with God's plan? Is it in line with God's purpose? And God is, is saying, okay, you will not be wealthy. God is simply saying, this is the purpose for that wealth. God is saying, uh, God is not saying, ah, no, it's better you remain poor. No, he's saying, it's better you change your mind. You can still be wealthy and God trusts you. There's a place in the Bible who calls them trustees. I think that's Luke chapter 16. He calls them trustees of true riches. People that God can entrust with true riches. The riches of material things. The riches of divine wisdom. The riches of a heart of love. The riches of a heart that forgives people. Trustees of true riches. I challenge house of his presence. And those who are connected to us. And those who follow us. Let us give thought. Deep thought. Reflective thought. To God's opinion about wealth it is because of reasons like this when you go and study the different teachings of jesus and where it had to do with money he had more warnings than teachings because he knows many are not getting it right even many involved in religion they're not getting it right so he kept warning a man's life does not consist of the abundance of things he possesses Oh, how difficult is it going to be for those who are rich to enter into the kingdom? Oh, look at this woman with two pieces of coins. She has given more than all these wealthy people. Most of his teachings on riches, wealth were warnings. Because he needed to shift our mindset from worldly ways with wealth to kingdom dynamics. For wealth. Shall we take a bow this morning? God is looking for those he can trust with wealth. People, if, when he needs it midnight, they will respond. When he needs it midday, they will respond. When he empties your account because he wants to give you a bigger account, they will respond. They will not say, ah, God, you know, a bed in hand is better than a thousand in the forest. Ah, a bed in hand. But give me more first before I give that thing you are asking for. How can you? It cannot be God that is telling me to empty my account. Of, ah, it cannot be God. I know the kind of suffer where I suffer to so even be able to save this. <laughs> God, you know, we have to save for the rainy day so that when rain falls, we can buy umbrella. We can buy umbrella. I will wipe off our car so that we can replace it. Like he said through the prophet Elijah, do my own first. And all the days of the famine, the drought, your crews of oil will not dry. Neither will there be lack in your household. And so it was. The woman eventually honored God's word through the prophet. And she knew no lack again for the remainder of the three and a half years of famine. I'd like you to pray for yourself. If you have been struggling with giving to the things of God, you're even struggling with tithe, not to even talk. Do you know New Testament tithe thing? When I look at it, I don't have the time to teach on that today. I'm not sure I won't have the time this year. I think New Testament giving may be more than Old Testament giving. Because if you love him more, you will give more. You will not regulate it. You will be like the woman who carried the alabaster box of ointment, broke the head. No regulation. She did not try to open the cover. She broke the head. The whole thing filled the room. She wanted to use to worship Jesus. But I'm sure. All the, do you know when someone wears strong perfume? Listen to this. When someone wears strong perfume and enters this place. All of us will perceive it. Do you know many a times if you leave the environment. Some of us may carry even some parts of that perfume. Fragrance. 
So when that woman broke the alabaster box of ointment, very expensive, all the people in that room, not just Jesus she wanted to use to worship, it, uh, worship with it, all the people in that room will carry that fragrance. He said, and the room was filled with the fragrance. I'd like you to pray for yourself. Lord, make me, enable me. I am naturally stingy, but I know you can help me. I struggle to give to the things of God. But I know you can help me. I don't struggle if I need to buy designer shoes for myself. They say $1,200. I say no problem. Not a problem. Let me have five pairs. Different colors. That's $6,000. Just like that. He said, how about the cost of delivery? You pay for delivery. He said, not a problem. Add it to the charges. I said, bring $200 in the house of God. He said, ah, what do they need it for? What do they need it for? Pastor looks like someone that is well taken care of. See the way his skin is, is shining. See the way his skin is glowing. What do they need it for? Pray for yourself. If you struggle with finances, ask God to break that yoke. And trust you with kingdom resources. Riches according to the terms of this world. That you can use to honor the Lord. That you can use to establish covenant. That you can use to showcase the goodness of God. Identify with the less privileged. In their lower states. Lord let your, let your presence fill this room. Let your power flow all over this room. As many as struggle with contentment. Struggle with. I mean difficult to be generous to the things of God. Lord, help us, liberate us, destroy the yokes, the yokes of bondage that make us lawful captives, destroy the yokes of our lives, of our minds, of our deeds. Let your power flow all over this place. You are the God who raises the poor out of the dung hills and sets them amongst princes. If you are trusting God to empower you so that you can be a pillar in the house, so that you can be a, 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 an enabler for the things of God, to give generously to the things of God. I like to pray for some people, just stand wherever you are. You are trusting God to enable you so that you can be useful and more empowered to give to the things of God. I like to pray for some people here today. You don't need to be ashamed and don't think of your circumstances. God raises men, according to Psalm 113, he raises men from the dung hills of life, raises the poor, that's the term, from the dung hills of life and sets them amongst princes, even the prince, princes of his people. They are trusting God to raise you, make you mighty, empower you. <laughs> one call, one contract, one opportunity, one contact, one connection can turn the trajectory of your life forever i'd like you to pray to god and ask him to bless you so that you can serve his cause his kingdom his covenant and identify with the less privileged widows orphans poor people with your resources tell god And please don't judge yourself according to your past. You might have been stingy in the past. You can turn a new leaf. That's why God is a merciful God. He does not judge us according to the frailties of our past. He said, my, my children do not sin. That's the standard. But he said, if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father. Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He has been made propitiation for our sins. And not only for our sins, but also for the sins of the whole world. Don't say, ah, me, that I don't have good track record. <laughs> Let me just advise myself. No. God can use the least amongst us to become the strongest amongst us. God can turn the, the report card of a stingy person to become a generous person. Lord, you are the enabler. You are the giver of grace. 
And according to your election of grace on my life, I pray for these people who have responded to this kingdom call. This is not a casual call uh, and a pity party. Let me show mercy on my God. No, this is a covenant call. This is a kingdom call. That you become a burden bearer. When you become a burden bearer for the kingdom, someone like you will have the same income like you, maybe one million naira a month. But because you are a kingdom burden bearer, you are willing to part with 700,000 out of that one million. While the other person is still struggling to part with 50,000. That's a kingdom burden bearer. And wealth in God is not what you have saved up, it's what you have given out. Lord, I pray for these people. Lord, I pray for these people. Their background will not stop them. Their environment will not stop them. The deeds of ignorance of the past will not speak against them for a glorious future. I pray for every one of you. May the power of the Almighty domicile in you. Grace. 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 To generate wealth. To see opportunities even in hard places. To rise where others are falling. Receive grace in this house. I pray for people yoked to the past. By reason of backgrounds. Take note. You are a new creature in Christ Jesus. The old name of your family patterns, negative patterns from your family background, you have been disconnected from such. If a man be in Christ, he's a brand new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are brand new. I pray for people in this house. And covenants by reason of times of ignorance, covenants by reason of background, will not be able to speak against you, will not be able to truncate your progress, will not be able to hinder your glorious future in the name of Jesus. May the blessing of the Lord locate you. He said the blessing of the Lord, it makes rich and adds no sorrow with it. May you receive the blessing of the Lord. May the blessing of the Lord locate you. On your job, the blessing of the Lord. By supernatural contact, the blessing of the Lord. By supernatural opportunities, the blessing of the Lord. By creative abilities, the blessing of the Lord. May the blessing of the Lord locate you and take residence in your life. May God find you faithful. May God find you able. May God find you resourceful. May God be able to use you to meet needs, to touch lives, to burden, bear burdens, to wipe away widow's tears, to bear the burdens of orphans, to identify with the poor in their low estate. In the name of Jesus. Lord, out of this house and with these people standing to bear these burdens of yours, I pray you raise mighty people. I pray you raise gracious people, grace-filled people, people who will stand on grace to touch lives, to bless lives, to add value to the things of the kingdom, to advance the kingdom of God on the face of the earth. Receive grace right now. And may your testimonies be sure. May your blessings be permanent. May the powers of this life not be able to truncate your supply or truncate your progress in the name of Jesus. And so shall it be in Jesus name. Please you may be seated. Before I close I will still pray for one or two people but we will take the communion now. And this holy communion he said as he is so are we in this world. Jesus is now glorified. Jesus is now at the right hand of the Father. And he said, as he is, so are we in this world. I trust God as we receive of this communion table, we receive grace. Grace will speak for us in very challenging, hard and harsh environments. The grace of God will guide you. The grace of God will nurture you. The grace of God will speak for you. That which has been hidden and dormant in your life will come alive. That which can add value to lives and bring progress into your life will come alive in the name of Jesus. 
as we receive of this communion, expect the grace of God that distinguishes people in their fields of endeavor, in their fields of talent and practice and engagement. Expect such grace to work in your life from today as we partake of this communion table. Lord, we dedicate this communion. Let your hand and your breath and your goodness be upon these items. Let your grace speak in this communion. As people partake of this communion, let grace flow. Let your power be known. Make a name for yourself out of each of our lives. And we thank you, Father, because we are prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. I like the uh, pastors and deacons in the house to join us to receive and to help to share this coming on our terms. If you are receiving of the Holy Communion, I'd like you to stand to your feet as a mark of worship and respect of the Lord whose body and whose blood we're partaking of today. If you are receiving of the Holy Communion, meaning you are born again and you want to partake of the body of the Lord and of his blood, please rise to your feet and pray for yourself. We're going to all receive the communion together. So even when you receive the items of the communion, uh, we have new communion package. So the items are together. The, the uh, um, wafer for the body is right on top of it. So you unpeel and take it. And then the, uh, the, the wine representing his blood is in the container. I'd like you to pray for yourself. Ask for the grace of God to flow into your life. Ask for the grace of God to speak in your life. When people hear you, they will not just hear intellect. They will also hear grace within your utterance, within your productivity, within your efforts. Grace will shine through. The supernatural power of God will flow through your efforts. You will not walk alone. You will not speak alone. You will not do alone. Grace will speak for you. Grace will partner with you. Grace will walk with you. Grace will speak through you. Those who hear you will hear God in you. Those who know you will know God. Those who feel you will feel God. The God of all grace. I'd like you to believe God for great things. That the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ will be domiciled in your life and find expression in your life. Be lifted above all other gods. We lay our crowns and worship you. Oh, be lifted above all other gods. We lay our crowns and worship you. Oh, be lifted above all other gods. We lay our crowns and worship you. Are we ready to receive the communion? Is there anyone who wants to receive, who is here to receive the items of the communion? Nobody. Shall we partake of his body together? I'll partake of his blood together.
Father, we'll trust you for life. We'll trust you for grace. He said we should do this often in remembrance of you until you come. And this we have done in obedience to your word and your command. We ask for grace upon these people. Upon these people who have received of the communion today, we ask for grace. Grace that speaks. Grace that walks. Grace that distinguishes. Grace that produces distinction in our lives, in our thoughts, in our relationships, in our endeavor, in our engagements, in our productivity, in opportunities for empowerment, opportunities for employment, opportunities for elevation, in our going out, in our coming in. Let grace speak. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ speak. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ speak. In the lives of these precious people, let your people testify. Let your people see the goodness of God in every aspect of their lives. And make a name for yourself out of our lives and glorify your son. We thank you, Father, because we are prayed in Jesus' name. By the way, let me also inform us, even the communion items, one of our people recommended it and sponsored it. And has chosen to sponsor it with his family until further notice. So that's a good one. Shall we celebrate the goodness of God? Hallelujah. Please let's stretch forth our hands towards Pastor. Let's pray for our Pastor and pray that God will replenish him. God has used him to point to us today to impart our lives with grace. Let's just pray that the Almighty God will replenish him, will refresh his spirit by the Holy Ghost. God will energize him. And God will also bless him. God will bless him. God will meet the needs of his life. You know, we always, most times, um, forget that pastor is here. <laughs> he might not point to himself. He might refer to people. But he also is someone who needs the help of God. So let's pray that God will remember our pastor, will visit his in blessing bless his wife bless his children supply all their need according to his riches and glory by christ jesus pray for our pastor even today yet yeah, that is an opportunity for us to pray even for god's servant that god will remember him god will bless him yes according to his riches in glory by christ jesus god will supply all his need uh, spiritual financial needs uh, social need physical needs god will meet his needs uh, he will bless his household bless his ministry remember him for good uh, in the name of the lord jesus father we thank you we exalt your name for your servants for in jesus mighty name we are prayed amen hallelujah let's celebrate the lord jesus glory be to god for that word in season we'd like to just don't be in the haste to have your seat please we want to bless the lord we want to give to god yes i just referred to the scripture pastor mentioned earlier uh, proverbs 3 9 and 10 say honor the lord the word honor is the word that means worship honor the lord with your wealth with your substance some translation says with your wealth and with the first fruit of all your increase and you know the blessing of the Lord, your barns shall be filled with plenty, and your presses shall burst out with new wine. If you want to be blessed like that, please, I always say this, when you want to give to God, give out of love and worship to God. If you know your heart, your motive for giving is wrong, don't bother giving. Don't bother giving. But when you want to honor God with your giving, give to Him, as unto the Lord, and God will accept your giving in Jesus. So let's be on our feet. And cheerfully let's give to the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have an account on the screen. If you want to make a transfer, please you can make use of the accounts there.
you for this privilege you've given to us to come and worship you with our substance we ask that what we have brought before you from the abundance of what you have blessed us with we produce a sweet smelling fragrance in your nose reel. May you accept our honor to you and accept us in the name of the Lord Jesus may the Lord delight in you delight in your giving and may God cause his blessing to rest upon every giver in this house in the name of the Lord Jesus and I pray for those who have believed God who have wanted to give but were not able today that today will be the last time you will appear before the Lord empty and in the name of Jesus May the Almighty God will go before you make ways for you where there seems to be no way we connect you with true riches and make you a giver so that honors the Lord in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, precious Father. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. You may have your seat in the presence of the Lord. Please let's see, listen attentively to the following announcement. This Wednesday, the 10th of April, we'll be having a, a discovery service. It's, it's, a, it's a time we'll come to uh, dig deep into the word of God. We'll be taught even from the word of God. So I want to encourage us, let's pray about our discovery service. Time is 6 p.m. The duty pastor for this week is Pastor Yemi Ode doing. So if you have any announcement, you have any special songs or testimonies, kindly get in touch with him in due time. We'll be having our prevailers place this coming Saturday. We couldn't have it last, I mean, yesterday because of the uh, mega capacity prayers. So this Saturday will be resuming and the ID is there displayed on the screen. 30, 50, 60, 70, 80, and the passcode is prayer or lowercase. So please let's take note of that one to see many of us join this prayer meeting room. It's not physical, it's virtual, so you can just connect from the confines of your home or your residence or even in your office, even on, in the car, you can join that meeting and just make sure you're praying. Hallelujah. Those who are here to go through the foundation of the believers class, please you need to put out your names with uh, the team leaders, Sister Jennifer Adekola, and uh, the deputy team leader, Sister Queen Ejeri. The members are always encouraged to share their testimonies in church. You heard the testimony of Deacon Dr. Benga and the wife. Powerful testimony. Pa testimonies that will challenge our faith. Hallelujah. So when God does something in your life, remembers you, heals you, blesses you, delivers you, come and share your testimony. It might just be the message for someone in church that day. I tell you, that testimony, there was a day we are sharing something with a brother. We are just sharing something shared by a woman of God. And he just carried his notebook. I said, wait, wait, wait. Just wrote and left. He said, in fact, this is just what I wanted to hear. And left. And that was the breakthrough in his life. Some of us might know him. There's no in for our court, But some of us who have been very much chapel, we know that brother. I remember that very incident, 2003. So you, can, you never can tell what you share. You never can tell the person that needed that word. It's not only when pastor comes to preach. You know, many things in service, they are connected to be a blessing to the believer. Hallelujah. So please, we're encouraged to share our testimonies in church. The members are also encouraged to join a team. We're not talking of fellowship. It can be in Enoch generation, women of his presence, city changers. But you have to be a part of the workforce. Have the team. We have about 12 teams. Ask your neighbor, which team do you belong to in this house? Get a response. Get, make sure you, got, you get a response. Which team? See, with due sense of humility, I, some of us, I supervise some teams, 
But I'm still a member of a team. And I joined the team. I sit down. I, we have leaders over us. Yes. There's nothing about it. I've been married. There's any big deal about it. Uh, I still belong to a team. Choice. And we have leaders in those teams. And they will say, oh, ah, pastors are in our team. Let's just be withdrawing and let them know. We sit down. You will, they'll give us roasters. And we comply. We comply. Some of us in that, we are not bragging. Even in the team, some of us know that you cannot say you are more effective, I mean, more, more committed in that team than some of us pastors. And it's not an issue. So why can't we just join? What's there? We used to arrange chairs. And pastors used to arrange chairs, chairs in this church. There's no big deal about these things. Please, we encourage or join a team. Look for a team that you know you have the grace to join and serve God in. There are many teams in church. Beautiful, I don't know if they can help us to project this. Beautiful, ushering, music, intercessory, media, technology, next gen, things church, um, protocol. We have several teams. Find somewhere and serve the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They, our teens, they will be having their teens impact Sunday and on Sunday, the 21st of April, 2024. So it's going to be an all teens event. Hallelujah. I believe God is going to minister to all through our teens. So let's look forward towards that, I mean, towards that meeting. It's going to be a glorious time in the presence of the Lord where we have our teens coming to minister to us powerfully. Then lastly, the City Changers Live Momentum Program who's next Sunday, the 14th of April, immediately after service. So if you belong to the City Changers, the youth arm of this church, so we're having live City Changers live momentum program next Sunday, immediately after service. So the City Changers will be having the Kinoyeka speak. Hallelujah. Dickin Dr. Oyeka. We're having him speak to them about his journey so far and how God has helped him in his career, his marriage and family life. So, uh, we want to encourage all our youth in the house. Please, next Sunday, don't be in a haste to go. You have a powerful, life-changing momentum program. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Are we not praising God because I'm challenging us to join a team? <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, we would like to... Make welcome the Dickens Board for their presentation. Put your hands together as you receive the Dickens Board. Praise the Lord. Empowerment 3.0. Somebody say empowered. Empowered. I believe that over the last few weeks, we've been empowered variously in the um, presentations we've had, skills acquisition, and finally, um, from the throne of grace, uh, from the pulpit live here every Sunday, and of course, Wednesday, discovery services. Okay, today, um, that will be week nine. Um, we had divine purpose for wealth and the resource person is no other than our own father in the Lord, Pastor Tunji Akionla. Um, he looked at Luke 12, Proverbs 3, 9 to 10, Genesis 4, 1 to 5, among several other scriptures. And then um, we have some nuggets here. We can't rehash the old thing all over. I'll just take a few of them. He started by telling us, amongst others, that um, the riches, opportunities, or resources of God that God is testing you with are so that you might do good in the latter end. Everything is so that you use it. You know, um, Acts says that God, Jesus was anointed and he went about doing good. The fool says in his heart that there is no God. You and I are certainly no fools, I'm sure. Riches are not the problem, of course. But what are you planning to do with such riches? The world's indices for measuring riches, wealth, riches and wealth are carnal, shallow, ephemeral, and laughable. Why? Because they are absolutely foolish. Such indices are foolish. And Pastor listed them. Beware 
any material possession can be devalued in a moment and he showed us how when god gives it comes with instructions don't be high-minded don't be haughty don't be arrogant they all mean the same thing if you attain to divine wealth god is not really interested in what you amass rather he's interested in what you do with what you amass so the question is what are you doing with the one you are amassing it now what do you want why do you want to be wealthy why do you want um yes why do you want to be wealthy what will you do with the wealth after all we've talked about that use your riches and wealth to draw people into the kingdom by sponsoring for instance gideon's international um new testament bible um sponsor or print tracts commit your resources towards establishment of the covenant church transportation services he mentioned something like that food funding food banks you see that in the developed world a lot food banks and of course evangelistic initiatives he said that god's plan for sustainable wealth is that it be used to do three amongst of course a thousand things he mentioned three honor and worship god and he gave us a scriptural spine from proverbs 3 9 to 10 genesis 4 1 to 5 2 establish covenant and advance the kingdom three do good giving to generous deeds and becoming a human embodiment of the love of god he went on to say that most of jesus references to riches were more of warnings they were more warnings than teachings please Heed these warnings. On a final note, identify with the poor, less privileged, widows, orphans, and destitutes. But much more, prioritize those of the household of God, the people of God in church, like the person seated next to you. Praise the Lord. I'm doing this on behalf of the press team and my leaders, uh, brother Dotun Ilori and sister Rich. Vitri Saro Nule have sent me to do this job. Thank you. Praise the Lord. You have, you have to say that before you would think that's the king's board. That's not the king's board. <laughs> because <laughs> morning church. <laughs> morning church. I said praise the Lord. The people here, the people that shouted. So let's start all over again. <laughs> praise the Lord. Amen. Those people just got empowered. <laughs> they just got the power. Well done. Um, morning, church. I'm super excited to be here. And I know, um, even while last week, some people just asked me, Dickon, when are you finishing this thing? So I was wondering, is it that you're getting tired or is it that you have been empowered? <laughs> what is it really? <laughs> you know? So I just feel the person has been empowered. Those people, the people that ask me those questions have been empowered. But the fact is that it's still ongoing and we are going to be done by next week. By next week, once we are done, we are going to have the full package up in uh, our Google Drive, all the presentations, all the videos, put it up there for people to go through. Yes, maybe relieve it uh, as we go, uh, as, we, as, we are done, as we are done with that. That is going to be archived in our, uh, this in, in our Google Drive. One thing that came up today while I was... I just today I just sat down upstairs just to listen to pastor's message, and he was saying something about uh, trustees. You know, uh, immediately I typed it. You know what came up? Pastor preached a similar message. It was even top there on empowerment, empowerment 2.0. It was the empowerment two. I just saw it. I said, ah, I was saying it in empowerment. I said, Pastor, not preached this message, and it was there. So it goes to show you that these things they keep coming at you. So you keep need to tap into it. Just hold on to it, like uh, Sister Mary told us tap into those things and from there you know you just see yourself getting out of it i can go along and i'm sure part of is what i'm part of what i'm going to share with the youth 2015 just it may be a, a, a crash program in that like pastor was trying to yeah, pastor tried to pray for people key into those things you know 2015 had my kind of uh, uh, uh low life as it were low time in this and, and you know pastor prayed called called some of us out prayed for us and and i'm still on that journey but the fact is that i was no i'm no more where i was i got that uh, stuff and since then i've been participating coming through uh, doing uh, uh, participating in church as a member doing things doing doing uh, things that will make uh, uh, sure that yes you are a member of this church so yeah like pastor richard also mentioned in doing all of this once you get uh, 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 empowered belong to a team make sure that people are starting to first see it's not 
just yet about, yeah, oh, I can't give this uh, as per a resource, maybe funds or, and that. But the fact that first, your time, give your time, come and be part of a team. Once you start showing forth from there, you see how God will start working things in your life. And truly, people will start seeing that, yes, in your life, empowerment has started. The fact, again, is that the last part of empowerment is coming up uh, for the craft. We are doing it online next week. Uh, this, uh, sorry, this Saturday. It's going to be the digital entrepreneurship. It's going to take a form for just like an hour. And after that, one hour, uh, our facilitator will send us a link. With that link, you are going to take, uh, we're going to just take a test. And four people will be uh, given a scholarship where you will not go for that digital entrepreneurship for uh, a space of three months. After that, you should be able to do, there's a lot about digital entrepreneurship, and that's the space that people are getting into now. You know, it's, you're going to learn first how uh, the, the goals and objectives of setting up a market, uh, uh, a business on a digital space, how to market digitally, how to grow your business digitally, and a whole lot. You don't want to miss that. He's going to give us first a crash program, and if you do, it is not restricted to the youth or anybody, just for everybody. So if you do well in that uh, this thing, that same stuff will be set up. That we are going to set up that test, and that those tests, anybody, if the four persons that get the highest score would be given the scholarship in conjunction to the people that we are giving uh, the scholarship uh, next week, uh, uh, Sunday. Um, also, for the persons that we called their name last week, we know we've reached out to you. We're going to be having those interviews today, immediately after service. Um, three sets. We're going to have um, three positions. But first, uh, just help us gather by my left hand side, which is on your right hand side of the church, so that. We can do those interviews and shortlist the persons that we're going to have uh, get that uh, those uh, scholarship that we have already spoken about. And please, we are uh, saying that this that once you once these things kick off, don't just take it lightly. Uh, where oh okay, they've taught us these things by um, only maybe in the, the people coming from Michael's uh, place to teach us. Well, what uh, Baba did today, what senior pastor did today, has prayed for us. He has you you stood up to say oh I want to be part of the persons that. This, uh, uh, the, 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 the anointing of empowerment has come up. Immediately, start making sure that those things, you start speaking it into your life, getting them to manifest in your life, and you will see that the Lord God will get you empowered. Thank you very much. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have a special set of people in our midst who would like to thank God for what God has done in their lives. They passed out just some few days ago, uh, having served our beloved nation through the NYSC program. Please, let's be on our feet as we make welcome. They, they are not ex-coppers. <laughs> let them come and thank the Lord and share with us their testimony. Let's be on our feet as we welcome them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Supernatural Baba. Dependable Jehovah Most High, now you be the original God. Supernatural Baba, dependable Jehovah Most High, now you be the original God. Supernatural Baba, Supernatural Baba, dependable Jehovah Most High, now you be the original God. Supernatural Baba, Supernatural Baba. Dependable, Jehovah Most High, and you be the original God. Lord, I bring, Lord, I bring you the sacrifice. Oh, I bring, Lord, I bring. There is nothing to give you but for you. He never shared. I told you to go. Lord, I bring, Lord, I bring you the sacrifice. Oh, I bring. I told you to go. There is no, there is nothing to give you but for you. I told you to go. Oh, 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 Yeah, I never see, I never see. Wonder, 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 so we said this God, I 
Hallelujah. Please, you may have your seat. I believe there are one or two things to share with us. Do you? Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So shout a wonderful hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, I want to thank God um, for the journey so far. Last year, me, up to this time, and I've passed out already. I want to give God all the glory and honor. I say, may his name alone be highly exalted in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Okay, I would love to thank the name of God for the successful service here because I didn't know I was going to come to camp this period. Because um, three days before the camping program, my mom had a very fatal accident. So I was just like, oh, I was not going, I was not going. And my brother was like, oh, you have to go, you have to go. So all through the camping process, everything, my head was like at home, but thank God everything is fine. And thank God for the um, gift of, of people, the gift of men. My stay in Portacot has been amazing and I'm grateful to God. Praise God. Hallelujah. I want to thank God for protection, preservation, and how you have sustained me for the period of one here in the States. May his name be exalted in Jesus' name. Praise God. I want to thank God for a successful completion of my NYC. I can remember our entire campus at last year around April to be precise. So I want to thank God I have been seeing me through, although it wasn't easy, but I thank God for everything. I have been sustaining me and my family. I want to give you thanks to everyone. Praise the Lord, Church. Praise the Lord, Church. It's actually been a wonderful one year experience here in Vast States, filled with many ups and downs. But thank God it's ended in success, and I'm here to give up praise to God for a wonderful completion of my service. He alone has the praise, and He alone should be praised and exalted. Hallelujah. Let's welcome our pastor to pray for them. Let us pray. Uh, I thank God for the lives of uh, these five coppers, Promise, Susan, Edidion, and Kilichi and Fred. We thank God for their lives and um, their testimony, not just in the city, but also in the faith. We appreciate the goodness of God in their lives. We are persuaded that God will lead them into new seasons, new faces of their lives. And God will keep their company. Will keep them company. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for these precious saints of yours. Promise, Susan, Edidion, Kelechi, and Fred, Frederick. We thank you for your hand on their lives. We thank you the way you order their steps into this environment for their service here. We thank you for their national youth service. We thank you for your grace the way you kept them some have lost their lives some have lost um, the members of their bodies in this period but you've kept them and they've also come to testify to your goodness today lord we pray that your blessing be upon these people the one these five uh, newly graduate newly graduated coppers and their colleagues particularly the ones who are members of this church who are unable to be here today we pray that lord you will set them on a new face. Order their lives. Show them what you want them to do next. You will not go in confusion. You will not be confused. God is the author of peace and not the God of confusion in the churches of the saints. May the blessing of the Lord be upon your lives. Order your lives. Bring you into favor. Bring favor to you. May the Lord elevate you. May the Lord 
order your steps concerning who to marry, concerning what to do, concerning how to prosper in life, and concerning how to serve the Lord. And may the Lord distinguish you in all things in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, for answers to prayers because we are prayed in Jesus' name. And the people say, believe in amen. amen. Congratulations, Fred Kelechi. Congratulations again. Edith Young, congratulations. Susan, Susanna Wesley, Susan Bidemi. Congratulations, promise. Congratulations. Please, let's celebrate them as they go back to their seats. Hallelujah. Susan happens to be my niece. Her mom is my first cousin. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Please, uh, one announcement, one more announcement. The Enoch generation will be having their uh, monthly prayer meeting in the after service today at the communion hall. So if you're a member of the Enoch generation, please take note of this. Hallelujah. Let's celebrate the Lord Jesus. Yes, yeah, celebrate Jesus. Celebrate Jesus. Celebrate Jesus. Celebrate Jesus. He's the Lamb of God. He's the King of Kings. He's the Lord of Lords. The author and the finisher of our faith. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Amen. We would like to appreciate those who are worshipping with us for the very first time on a Sunday morning like this. Please have that person please wave back at me wherever you're seated. Today happens to be your very first time worshipping with us in the international house of his presence. Any, any, any such persons, hallelujah. Please can you be on your, on your feet, brother. Any other person you are worshipping with us for the very first time in the international house of his presence. Any other person? That other brother there too. Any other person? This is the house of his presence Reaching out to every nation Making his presence known and felt Building a people of praise You are welcome to the house of his presence Our brothers, God bless you for worshiping with us today in the international house of his presence. We have a mandate from God through God's servant, and the mandate is making known and felt the presence of God, making his presence known and felt throughout the air using every godly means. That's our vision, is our passion, is what we run with in this house. And by the special grace of God, we have services that have been put together. Yes, by the help of the Holy Spirit to minister to us, to impart our lives, to equip us so that we can go out there and showcase the presence of the Lord. Every Sunday, like we have the Kingdom Life Service, what we are partaking of today is our Kingdom Life Service, a celebration service between the hours of 9 and 11 30 a.m. On Wednesday, we come together for our discovery service, a teaching service between 6 p.m. and 7 15 p.m. Then on Saturday, we pray presently via the virtual platform the zoom platform every saturday by 6 30 a.m what we call the prevailers place and time is i mean uh, the zoom details the login details is 30 50 60 70 80 and the passcode is prayer all lowercase so every saturday we come to pray you can join any of our services i want to encourage if you're in this town you you don't have a church you are planted this is the place to be I want to let you understand. I mean, I want to assure you of that. This is the place to be where you've been parted through the word of God, where you get to know God more, you discover purpose for your life, and the blessings of God will rest upon you in Jesus' name. The presence of God is making the difference in our lives. So we want to invite you to come partake with us what the presence of God is doing in this place. So I want to encourage you, beloved, once again, if you are in this, if you are passing by this city or you are here to reside, be a part of what God is doing. And God will bless you in Jesus' name. And also, immediately after service, we have a team, the reinforcement team. They have one or two things to share with you at the rear end of the auditorium. Don't be in the haste to go. Just about two, three minutes of your time. 
Brethren, let's celebrate them once again as they take you to that level. We'd like to welcome our pastor. All right, thank you. Uh, we're glad to have you, uh, Brother Kolagi and uh, Brother David. And um, I've forgotten the sister's name. What's your name? confidence that's a powerful name so we're glad to have every one of you and um, we hope this will not be your sole time of worship with us we asked that today we want to take our commitments checks transfers pledges towards the 2024 projects we've told us we have a number of things we want to um, do and we want congregational support for it our Kabod conference for this year, our Jesus Crusade to the village, to a village. We're going to an Aquarian community, I think, in uh, Obiapo, uh, local government area this year. We want to buy two uh, video cameras. We've bought one already. We want to replace our main keyboard. Um, we're still looking at market forces. When we made the announcement to us, we had a budget of six million because we got it for about 5.9 million um but when we wanted to buy they told us to come and pay 8.2 million because that was when dollars shot up to about 1900 but now dollars come down to about 1200 and they've removed about 100 200 thousand naira from the so we're still watching the market forces and we're considering the possibility of buying we have some of our people who travel we might have to buy from abroad. We're looking at the exchange rates and buying from abroad, and things are favoring that option. So we want to get a keyboard. We've told us about it. Video cameras to um, outreaches to prisons, hospitals, um, cardboard conference. We want to paint the facility and um, Jesus Crusade. So we told us we have a budget of 36 million naira. We have a few people, like I told us, but I even want the people who have already given, just still indicate, so that that will help our records. Where people have given, given in naira, given in dollars towards the um, towards this project. So we want to hear from us. What do you want to do? Are you making a transfer? Put it in writing for record purposes and make the transfer. Are you making a promise, like a pledge? Put your name, put your phone number. Can we have the slips of paper? So, if you are writing a check, write in favor of House of Presence, but just indicate 2024 projects so that we don't mix up these things with the Titan offerings. If you are making a transfer, also indicate. Just write 2024 projects. Once you write that, we will know what it is about. So we need you to make your commitments known. Write your name, write your phone number, and write your mode of commitment. Are you doing an, a, a four installment uh, gift towards the course? Are you doing a one-off giving towards the course? Are you making a transfer? Are you writing a check? indicate those things in the slips of paper if you want to make a commitment over a period you can indicate maybe april to june you can indicate maybe may to july whatever so that that will also help us with planning and execution of the various things we have to do in the course of the year like i told us we already bought one of the cameras and it's serving us very well because the other cameras we had wear and tear i think the newest of those cameras was purchased in 2015 and it was already reflecting the quality it was becoming hazy the quality of the uh, video uh, production so let's have that quickly let's respond to that quickly so that we can close we've already shot over our time very well can i have a slip of paper So by and during the week, we'll put together, we'll compute all these things, we'll give you your feedback, what people have committed to doing. If there is a shortfall, I will not hesitate to come back to us. If we cross the line, 36 million naira, 
will also make that known to us. All right, so let's take, let's begin to receive whatever has been promised. If you want to make a transfer today, these slips of paper is just for record purposes. Go ahead and make your transfer. If you are making a commitment over a period of time, indicate it as listed in the pieces of paper. If you know you are not able to do anything now or any time in the course of the year, don't make false promises. Promise what you plan to do promise what you plan to give um, the bible says god does not accept the sacrifice of fools make a promise fulfill it if you have no plan of fulfillment make no efforts to promise all right before we close i want to pray for three people we've been training them for ministry work they've been engaged and serving faithfully in various levels would like to receive Minister Michael uh, Detail. <laughs> Minister Michael was prayed for along with um, Minister Adewali Adebisi um, to help us to coordinate the youth ministry and they did a fantastic work. But now we are praying for him as a minister, bona fide minister in house of his presence. Please face the congregation. Minister Michael Adetayo is single presently, yet to marry, planning to marry and um comma let me just leave it at that and then also shall we receive um sister ann dagogo green sister ann green sister ann is a lecturer in the uh, river state university she has served faithfully in various capacities in the house she's currently the president of the women's ministry of this house women of his presence and like i said she has served in various capacities over the years having been a member of this church for almost 20 years now. And then also we have Sister Jenny Adekola. <laughs> Sister Jenny Oluchi Adekola. Ahudia. So uh, Sister, so our female ministers, they are both married. Uh, Dr. Ann is married to Deacon uh ada dagogo green uh who is currently presently based in abuja so um he's trying to help us influence the seat of power in abuja so he's uh, he has been delegated to that space so um yeah so uh, dr Anne is married to um Deacon ada dagogo green and they are blessed with children um, Sister Jenny Oluchi Adekola is married to our bishop in the house, Pastor Richard Adekola, and they are blessed with children. I don't know if there are more to come. So I don't know if their quiver is full. So, um, and so these three people have served very faithfully, been trained, and the training is still ongoing for some more time for the three of them. There are some other people who are also training, but these are the ones we are presenting. So henceforth, we'll pray for them today, and henceforth, they will be, re and they will be regarded as ministers, bona fide ministers in this house. Minister Michael, Minister Anne, Minister Jenny. Please stretch forth your hands towards them and pray for them. Pray for grace, pray for capacity. Pray for divine wisdom. To whom much is given, much is required. 
So they will be joining with us. They are not yet on the leadership council, but they will be joining with us in ministerial functions, pulpit functions in this house as ministers. Pray that God give them capacity. God give each of them a shepherd's heart. Pray that God give them wisdom to lead God's people in God's purpose, with God's methods, with God's grace. No, we no man according to the flesh anymore. Though we have known Christ according to the flesh, no, we him no more according to the flesh. They will minister beyond their years, beyond their human experiences. They will minister in the fullness of the grace of God. God will be their sufficiency. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. Please turn this way. Father, I thank you for these precious people. Son, son and daughters in the faith. I thank you for their roles over the years, 20 years, 17 years, almost 10 years of service, each of them. We thank you for the roles they played in various ways to add value and to supply grace and to bear the burdens of the Lord with us. Lord, I pray as your servant and the one you've given grace and mandate in this house of the grace you've placed on my life let there be portions measured out to these vessels to serve with us to bear the burdens of the lord with us to function in leadership with us to carry the grace of god foresight hindsight insight that makes for exploits May the hand of God be upon each of you. May you walk in newness of capabilities. The newness of life. May you begin to see things in new ways. Divine perspectives. Divine authority. Divine enablings. In the name of Jesus. And I pray as you join ranks with us on the leadership council of this church. May your involvement and your calling add grace, add value, bring increase, enhance our level of impact as a ministry in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for answers. Thank you also for attending to the issues of their lives, their spaces, their spheres of influence. And we give you the praise. Because we are prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Minister Anne Dagogo Green, congratulations. <laughs> Minister Michael Adetayo, congratulations. Minister Oluchi Jenny Ahudia Adekola, congratulations. Shall we put our hands together for them as they go back to their seats? So please have in mind, we will be raising a food bank, we will notify us as to the strategy and structures and the regularity of the same. But let's bear the burdens of the Lord together. Let's identify with needs around us, in the community, in the city, in-house. I remember one of our people asking some years ago that we do outreach, 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 that we need to reach inside this place. Oh. Don't forget also, we made a lot of sense. Please also we don't have monopoly of, monopoly of knowledge and monopoly of um, ideas. So if you feel there is anything vital, expedient, godly, honest, pure that is lacking in the house, please do not hesitate to call our attention to such. Either you get up to me directly or through any of the pastors or through any of the ministers or through any of the deacons. They are giving me one advice. I said, no, that, that advice will not fly this time. Sorry. We, we will handle that in due course. All right. So, um, yeah. So, we don't have monopoly of ideas or how to get things done. What we know, we engage. What we don't know, maybe God can use you as a funnel to get such insight and wisdom to us 
You can get across to me directly. You can send a text. You can get across through our pastors or our ministers like we presented them today or any of our deacons. And we'll look into it. We'll critique it. And where it tick all the boxes, we'll be willing to adopt and implement. Shall we rise to our feet to close this up? Sorry, I have taken so much of your time today. But I hope it's beneficial. Praise God. Let's take the benediction together. Hebrews chapter 13, chapter 13 from verse 20 to verse 21. Now, may the God of peace who brought up our Lord Jesus from the dead, that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make me complete in every good work to do his will, working in me what is well pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Before you go, help me get someone close to you. Make sure you get someone and ask the following questions. Do you still want to be rich and wealthy? Do you still want to prosper materially? Any no in the house? Any yes? Uh -huh. And I, I like that, that I'm hearing yes. Let it not be that after we have taught you, we've shown you to count the cost, you are still well informed to make that choice. God also is interested in making us mighty, making us rich, but for his own purposes. So walk in the purpose of God, and God will raise you to be trustees of true riches in Jesus' name. God bless you. Have a great week. Bless quarter of the year. The Lord order your steps. The Lord fill you with wisdom. Surround you with favor as a shield. Cause his face to shine upon you. And grant you peace and prosperity on every side in Jesus' name.